presents a National Football League AFC battle between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the San Diego Chargers. Hello, everybody. I'm Dick Stockton, along with Jack Buck, Hank Stram, and Brent Musburger. Together, we'll bring you all the action and excitement of tonight's game, sponsored by English Leather Cologne and Aftershave, Budweiser, Pennzoil Motor Oil, by the copier division of Sharp Electronics Corporation, by Buick and your Buick dealer, Levi's Jeans, Bayer Aspirin, and by Express Mail Next Day Service. The final playoff berth in the National Football League is at stake as the Steelers and Chargers get ready to conclude the regular season in just a few minutes in San Diego Stadium. Before yesterday's action, the postseason picture was a maze of possibilities, but that's no longer the case. The story tonight is simple. If the Chargers defeat the Steelers, they are the AFC Western Division champions for the second straight year and will advance to the playoffs. However, should Pittsburgh beat San Diego, the season is over for the Chargers. Here's how it works. A Chargers victory gives them the division title over Oakland by virtue of a tiebreaker. Both teams would finish with identical records of 10 and 6. The Raiders would be a wild card entry. A Chargers loss gives Oakland the AFC Western crown, and then the New England Patriots would gain the playoffs as a wild card team under tie-breaking procedures. Now, a deadlock tonight makes the Chargers a wild card team. But basically, San Diego has to win to survive, and they have to win against the Steelers, who saw their faint playoff hopes vanish yesterday and will be on the outside looking in for the first time in nine years. More after this message. The only thing that may need trimming right now is the Christmas tree. But next year, there'll be plenty of grass and weeds to take care of. Hi, Pat Summerall to suggest you give the Weed Eater Model 807 electric trimmer from True Value Hardware Stores. It quickly cuts a 14-inch path along sidewalks, fences, and driveways. And the exclusive tap-and-go line advance makes it even easier on its user. This Christmas, give the gift that's appreciated now for the work it'll do later. The Weed Eater Electric Trimmer from participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Chuck Knoll promises no wholesale house cleaning when the four-time world champions try to get their act together again next season. It has become a popular pastime and will continue to be to analyze and dissect where the Steelers fell down this year. But Knoll's refusal to panic is an indication of the man. In his very first season back in 1969, when the Steelers finished 1-13, Knoll never lost his poise, his perspective, or his sense of purpose. He was the same this year, despite the problems and the ultimate failure of his club to make the playoffs. For a team to know the success the Steelers have experienced, it is not easy to face the consequences of 1980. And here's what all-pro center Mike Webster says about that. Disappointment is probably not a strong enough word. You know, we've been successful. The last eight years we've been in the playoffs. It was something that we took for granted, but I thought we, we missed that little bit of intensity all year long that has gotten us over the hump in the past in the, in the tight, tough, close games. And there's no excuse and no reason for us to, to let down because uh, we respected our opponents. We knew what they were capable of, and yet uh, we didn't meet the challenge or pass the test. And that's something that's going to be hard to swallow during the off season. Mike Webster, the Steelers' center, and their only Pro Bowl member on offense this season. What a difference a year makes. The Steelers' incentives in this one are the obvious. Pride, finishing on a high note, a 10-6 and six record, knocking the Chargers out of the postseason playoffs. Individually, Franco Harris needs 241 yards to wind up with 1,000 yards rushing for the seventh straight time. It'll be tough. And Chuck Knoll can move ahead of one of his former mentors, Sid Gilman, as the NFL's ninth all-time winningest coach. And we'll have the San Diego picture in just a moment. The Sun Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Senior Bowl. From CBS Radio Sports comes postseason college play at its finest on most of these stations. On Saturday, December 27th, we take you to El Paso for the Sun Bowl as Mississippi State takes on the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Dick Stockton handles the play-by-play -play and Roman Gabriel the analysis in color. Then it's on to the Cotton Bowl for this traditional New Year's Day game. Jack Buck and Hank Stram will be there for play-by-play -play and color as the Southwest Conference champs, the Baylor Bears, try to hold back the Crimson Tide of Alabama. On Saturday, January 17th, the Senior Bowl, as top college seniors from around the country show their gridiron skill. Jim Kelly calls the play-by-play -play with Bill Wilkerson covering common and color. 
So get in on all this great postseason college play with CBS Radio Sports on most of these stations. The Sun Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Senior Bowl. Hear them here. It has been a dazzling season for the San Diego Chargers, particularly on offense. Quarterback Dan Fouts has already broken his own record for most passing yards in a season, and he's established a new NFL mark, going over 300 yards in the air seven times this season. On the other end, there's tight end Kellen Winslow, who has caught 79 of Dan Fouts' passes, the most ever by a tight end in the NFL. With John Jefferson also with 79 receptions and Charlie Joyner with 68, it is a spectacular array indeed. Now Chuck Muncie has come on to give San Diego the balance with the running attack they didn't have earlier. And it all adds up to the number one offense in the AFC. Defensively, the Chargers are not nearly as impressive despite leading the NFL in quarterback sacks. Three of their defensive linemen are heading for the Pro Bowl, including Louis Kelcher, who was injured and didn't play last year. Kelcher looks upon the importance of this game in this way. We're up for this game. This, you know, the biggest game of the year for us. Uh, this is for all the all the marbles. Uh, we knew it was going to be close uh, all the way down the wire, and we're just glad to be in a position that we are. Uh, we could be completely out of it by now, and uh, like a lot of teams are. So we're uh, we're 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 grateful to be ten and five and coming at home playing Monday Night Football against Pittsburgh and uh, winning this it will mean uh, the division. The Chargers, Louis Kelcher, named to the Pro Bowl, along with Fred Dean and San Diego's top pass rusher, Gary Johnson. Dean, however, may miss tonight's game due to the death of his young daughter. Back with a final word in just a moment. Despite the Steelers' obvious pride and intent to finish the season on a positive note, it's San Diego playing at home with the same opportunity Buffalo and Cleveland had yesterday, a chance to win their game and become division champions. The Bills and Browns did just that. Now we'll see if the San Diego Chargers are hungry and have what it takes to follow suit. In just one minute, we'll be going to Jack Buck and Hank Stram in San Diego Stadium for football action. Until next time, this is Dick Stockton, CBS Radio Sports. It's 24 degrees at WNAX under a partly cloudy sky. This is WNAX, Yankton, South Dakota, your big friend for sports in the Midwest. And now with the play-by-play -play of this evening's game between Pittsburgh and San Diego, here's Jack Buck and Hank Stram. Well, quarterback, number 29, Ron Johnson. And right quarterback, number 47, Bell Blunt. The strong safety, number 31, Johnny Shell. From the San Diego Stadium in San Diego, California, on the CBS Radio Network, and around the world with American Forces Radio, CBS Radio presents the final 1980 Monday Night National Football League game with the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the San Diego Chargers. Good evening, everyone. This is Jack Park, along with Hank Strand, and we'll be bringing you all the action and excitement of tonight's game. About 55,000 fans are here. And you can tell that the temperature is 60 degrees. The Steelers have already been introduced. The defensive unit of the San Diego Chargers being introduced at the moment. And the Chargers song this evening is all or nothing at all. They're either the division champions or they are out of the playoffs altogether. This big crowd greets Louis Kelcher, their favorite defensive lineman. This broadcast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the San Diego Chargers is prohibited. We're at the San Diego Stadium in San Diego. The Chargers are hosting the Steelers. We'll hear from Hank Stram and we'll continue in just one moment. Hank Stram, this has to be a good football game, and from the Charger viewpoint, I would hate to go on the field knowing that I had to beat a team as good as the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're out of the playoffs. They've been in the playoffs nine years in a row till this year, and going out there knowing you have to beat them is a handful, isn't it? Uh, it really is, and thank goodness uh, from the stand San Diego standpoint, really that they don't have Stallworth, they don't have Smith, they lost some offensive people. And uh, for that reason, why they haven't been nearly as efficient as they've been in the past, but they're still a very good football team. 
And uh, on a one-game basis, as you say, boy, they can always be very tough. And tonight they've lost the linebacker, Dennis Winston, with the flu. And uh, Randy Grossman has a bad back. And Benny Cunningham will be starting. The referee is Jim Tunney. He brings the co-captains to the center of the field for the coin toss. The visiting Steelers will call the toss. We have a grass field here at San Diego Stadium. Little or no wind advantage, so whoever take, wins the toss will take the ball. The coin is in the air. The Steelers call it, and the Steelers have won it. The Steelers will receive. Both teams are on the field, and shortly will have the opening kickoff. Ralph Anershka will kick it off. The deep man is Larry Anderson. He's averaged 28 yards plus per kick return. He is flanked by Greg Hawthorne and Frank Pollard. San Diego kicking off from our right to our left to get this game started. San Diego, Hank, looks like they're up on the clouds, and Pittsburgh looks like they're right down on the grass emotionally. And you really have to be careful uh, from an emotional standpoint when he gets so high that you don't know when you're going to come back down in, in the process. You might get yourself in serious trouble. Here's the kick to Anderson on the 9. To the 15, running right to the 20, to the 25, getting outside to the 27-yard line. Downfield was Glenn Edwards, as he frequently is for San Diego to make the tackle at the 27-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. One thing I think is very important uh, as far as the, the beginning of this football game, I think that if I were the coach of the San Diego Chargers, I would feel much, much better about starting the game playing defensively than I would if I had to take the ball off and go 75 or 80 yards because the emotional level is very high and uh, you can make a big mistake on offense and get yourself in serious trouble. Bell and Swan are to the left. Flyer and Harris are in the backfield for Terry Bradshaw. The up man is Franco Harris. Got only a yard over the right side. Filling in very quickly was Ray Preston, the outside linebacker. He jammed things right back at Louis Kelcher, and Harris got only one yard. And we should uh, acknowledge the appearance here of Rocky Flyer at the outset. Hank, what a fine individual, what a great football player he's been. Yes, and Pittsburgh's going to miss him, and professional football is going to miss a great player and a person like Rocky Flyer. Tight end is Benny Cunningham. He's on the right side. I think we're going to see Pittsburgh try to throw their backs more than they have in the past. They like to throw the ball downfield. Here's Rocky Blyer out to the 31-yard line, and he was belted by Woody Lowe, the outside linebacker. It is going to be third down and five. The one thing the Pittsburgh Steelers cannot afford to do is get, them, get themselves in trouble by not making yardage on first and ten. They have to stay out of the third and long situations because the, the defensive line... The San Diego Chargers are big and strong, and they really control the line of scrimmage and really get after the passer on the obvious passing situation. Third and five from the Steeler, 31. The tight end, the Cunningham, is out. The additional wide receiver, Calvin Sweeney, is in. Bradshaw back to throw a lot of time. Steps up and throws over the middle, and it's caught at the 45-yard line of San Diego by Theo Bell. And there's nothing wrong with Bradshaw's arm, even though it's late in the air. Brother, he threw a fastball. Bell went high and caught it. And he was tackled immediately. And they give him forward progress down to the 43-yard line of San Diego. Bradshaw was trying to throw the ball to Rocky Blyer. The linebacker, the left linebacker on that side, knocked him right to the turf. He had no chance as Ray Preston, 52. He went inside to Theo Bell, and he made the, the big play. And a first down at the San Diego 43-yard line. Split bags, Harris and Blyer. Tight end is back in there. Blyer, a hole over the left side, breaks it inside the 35-yard line, down near the 34. And he got a quick five yards. Mike Fuller, who's playing the safety spot with Glenn Edwards, came up and made the hit. I think the common feeding, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers like to trap, especially in even spacing, even spacing meaning that you have uh, two tackles over the offensive guards and a middle linebacker off the ball. I think they feel they can go after Bob Horn, the middle linebacker, and they've done a pretty good job of it so far. Flyer picked up nine yards, and it is second down and one from the 34, and it's Franco Harris for a first down. Down to the 30-yard line of San Diego, and he was tackled by Dijernay, who was playing in place of Fred Dean at the defensive end spot, and the Chargers will miss Fred Dean here this evening. They really will, and Ted Peterson, the offensive left tackle, number 66 of the San Diego Chargers, I guarantee he feels much, much better playing against DeJernay than he would against Dean because Dean is really a snoot for 11.55 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Pittsburgh has held the ball from the outset. They're at the 30-yard line of the Chargers. And on first down, here is Bradshaw going to throw on first down a lot of times. Stands and looks. 
now throws, and it is caught inside the 20-yard line for another first down for the Steelers, and the hit was made immediately by the cornerback, Willie Buchanan. Lynn Swan went high and caught it. Buchanan dropped him, and the ball is now resting at the 18-yard line of San Diego. Pretty good march by Pittsburgh. Very good march by Pittsburgh, and uh, that time they ran a play-action pass. Bradshaw had all the time in the world to throw the ball, did a good job of reconnoitering the area, finally threw the ball to the outside to Swan, and they're now in a great position to go in and get some scoring, to score some points on this very first drive of the game. They're at the 18. They haven't put any pressure on Bradshaw. He is now at the 18-yard line of San Diego. And on first down, he gives the ball to Franco Harris following a block by Blyer. He gets three yards to the 15. Woody Lowe tackled him along with Louis Kelcher. He waited for Blyer's block, and Harris picked up three. And that was a counterplay. He took a step took a step to the right with the express purpose of making the linebacker, the middle linebacker, stay at home so that a guard or a tackle could get a good block on him. Then he went back to the left side. Blyer did a good job of blocking the linebacker, and he popped through there for three yards. Oh, boy, they're rooting for the Steelers in New England. The ball's at the 15-yard line, and it is second down and seven for Pittsburgh. Gold, gold trousers, black stripe, black jerseys, black helmets, and a delay to Franco Harris over the right side. He moves down to about the 12-yard line. It'll bring about a uh, third down play. Leroy Jones tackle him. He's the biggest man up front. He and uh, Louis Kelcher, but Jones is 6'8", 260. And it's going to be third down and four for Pittsburgh. And talking about New England, very happy to hear today that they gave Ron Earhart a, a new contract. I think he's very deserving, and I think and eventually... Uh, they're going to do a super job there with, with the great talent they have in New England. But they'll be through for the year unless Pittsburgh can upset San Diego here tonight. The ball's at the 12. It's third and four. Steelers have kept the ball for more than five minutes. Bradshaw on third down and four is straight back to throw. There's no pressure. He throws into the end zone and incomplete. And a flag. No flag. No flag. I thought the official was reaching for it. Benny Cunningham is really complaining. Cunningham is really complaining about the actions of Mike Williams over there on the corner, and I thought the official was reaching in his pocket for that flag, Hank. No, I think it was the reason for his comb. He wanted to comb his hair, Jack. <laughs> Cunningham came up beefing about the call, and into the game is Matt Barr. He's kicked 12 out of his last 14. He's kicked 18 out of 26. The ball will be held by the punter, Coldquist. Bradshaw, two out of three. He missed that one in the end zone. And the field goal try by the soccer-style kicker, Matt Barr. The ball at the 19, a 29-yard try. Good step, good set, and no good! It went off to the left, and the Steelers failed to score. Matt Barr had been hot, but he missed that one. 9.28 left in the quarter. The ball will come out to the 20. The Chargers get it for the first time, and we'll see some fireworks now. With the score, nothing, nothing. Let's take time out. Well, you would have figured the Steelers would come away with some points. I thought it was a good enough snap and set, didn't you, Hank? Oh, yeah, he just kicked the ball crooked. My little daughter, once after one of our games in Kansas City, we missed a field goal, and she came back after the game. She said, Dad, how come the kicker kicked the ball so crooked? That's the opposite of straight. Here's Fouts with uh, Chuck Muncy, the lone setback. Two tight ends, Kellen Winslow and Greg McCrary for San Diego, and a first down pass by Fouts. What's new? Over the middle, caught up to 25 and then dropped. And stripped of the ball was Winslow. And Ron Johnson, the little cornerback, climbed his frame. He had the ball, but then dropped it you know, and missed a five-yard game. Yeah, excuse me, Jack. One thing that you cannot do against the Pittsburgh Steelers, you just can't line up in a vanilla formation, basic formations, without any movement, and expect to beat Pittsburgh because they're big and strong. Do an excellent job of putting pressure, using a pressure kind of defense on pass defense. You've got to move their strong safety, Donnie Shell, around some and uh, to keep him out of the running game. Here's the running game of San Diego with Muncy sweeping right, comes out for four yards and hit hard at the 24-yard line by Donnie Shell. Shell is the strong safety, a very good tackler, and it's going to be third down and six. Pittsburgh up front is playing L.C. Greenwood, Joe Green, Steve Furness, John Banizak. The linebackers, Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, and Lauren Taves. The cornerbacks are Ron Johnson and Mel Blunt. Donnie Shell and Mike Wagner are the safety men. You know, one thing about this Steeler defense, their seventh and turtle defense, very good against the rush, and 12 against the pass, which means they haven't done a good job of rushing the passer during the course of this 80 season. Motion by Jefferson, fouls with a quick pass. It's caught by Winslow for a first down across the 35-yard line, out to the 39-yard line, and he was tackled by Wagner. 
And Winslow is 6'6", 252. That's the 80th pass he has caught this year. And he's going to be one of the keys to the game because they, they throw the ball to him from so many different formations and so many different looks. You don't know where he's coming from, and it's very difficult. It would be very difficult for Donnie Shell when they get him one-on-one -on -one to cover him on any passing situation. Well, Pittsburgh kept the ball for 5 minutes, 32 seconds, missed a field goal. The Chargers just got their first first down. Here's Muncie popping it out to the 45. He is out to the 47 and near the 48 with a strong power run over the right side, and he carried for about 8 yards on that first down run. Jack Lambert and Donnie Shell, Mike Widener were all there for the hit. You know, they've changed their personality a little bit since they got Chuck Muncie, uh, Jack. They used to be a one one backfield formation, and that, that one back was always the fullback. Now, because Muncie had such an outstanding dimension to, to their attack, he's the guy that occupies that deep position, has really done a good job. It is second down and one at the San Diego 48. Motion by Winslow, and here's a give to Muncie. Gets a first down. He's out to midfield and beyond to the 49. A first down for San Diego, Hank. The Steelers are using the fifth back, Wayne Woodruff, on every down. And why not? Because San Diego throws it almost every down. That's exactly right. And with five defensive backs, however, you miss a linebacker, and that one defensive back has to play like a linebacker. And if you run the ball more than you expected, you were expected to run the ball, they're going to have some success from that standpoint. We have 6.59 remaining in the scoreless first quarter, and the clock is running. The ball's at midfield, and a charger first down. They're clad in white with the gold trousers. Jefferson goes in motion. Fouts gives to Muncie. Coming outside to the left. Comes to the 45. And he is out of bounds at the 44-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mel Blunt shoved him out. That time was a great illustration of how they're trying to control Donnie Shell. Normally, he's up close to the line of scrimmage and is really murder against the run. That time, they sent Jefferson in motion to the left. And he was about 12 yards off the ball when the ball was snapped. And that's where you want him because he can't tackle anybody when he's down the field 12 yards. Once he got six, and it's second and four from the Pittsburgh 44. No score, six, 43 left in the quarter. Look at all the movement, and look where Shell is. He's about 12 yards deep. Double covers on the outside people. Somebody inside should be over. Throws over the middle, and it is, it is. It's incomplete and almost picked off by Donnie Shell. Shell should have intercepted it. He has seven this year. He tried to float it out there to Kellen Winslow, who hadn't turned around. And uh, that was on a second down play, and it's going to be third down. And have you noticed the absence of flags thus far in this game, Hank? Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch a game where you don't have to look like uh, look at the game like a tennis match and try to figure out where the flag's going to be thrown. Third and four from the 44. San Diego, a couple of first downs in this drive. Ron Smith is a wide receiver. Muncie is out. Mike Thomas is in the backfield for the Chargers. He can catch the ball. They have three. Now, here comes Shell. Look how deep he is. Here's Fouts going to throw. He throws off to the right, and it is caught for a first down inside the 40-yard line. Tackle made immediately by Woodruff, and it'll be another first down. And it was Kellen Winslow with another reception. Yeah, it's fun to watch this because Donnie Shell, who has to cover to cover him man for man usually was in the middle of the formation wasn't even close to him on the play they're using the five defensive backs as you mentioned but Donnie Shell they're negating his uh, alignment and the great thing that he does from a defensive standpoint neither team has applied pressure to the passer thus far in this game now they're all looking at Pittsburgh and watching the man go in motion <laughs> the ball's at the 38 of the Steelers and a first down for Fouts he's going to put it up he sets up and throws one over the middle, and Jefferson caught incomplete at the 10-yard line, and he was walloped by Mike Wagner. He tried to catch him with one hand. That's all he could do, and Wagner unloaded on him, and the ball fell to the turf at the 10. Now, that's an interesting mismatch there. They finally that wound up with Jefferson running a pattern down the middle, and Donnie Shell trying to cover him man for man. He had some help from the inside. Had he not had that help, he'd have made a big play. The Steelers' uh, secondary has been burned frequently uh, this year. Other teams have been able to move the ball through the air, 204 yards per game and a 52% passing completion. But 26 interceptions by the Steelers. Second down and 10. From the Pittsburgh 38, bouts on a delay to Muncie. Muncie stretches out to the 35-yard line, and it'll be third down and seven. And Muncie is doing a much better job of keeping the ball close to his body and not swinging it out away from his body like he has in some of the other games that we've seen him play. He has to re he has to, to practice and rehearse that every day of the week because he has some bad habits as far as 
here in the football is concerned, and you have to stay on him, and he'll do a good job. I didn't think he really exploded when he got the ball, Hank, did you? No, he was looking. He was looking, reading the blocks, trying to get as much out of the play as he could. Robin Cole is in as a linebacker for the Steelers. He's quite good at blitzing, and it's third down and seven. Look at the Here's look at Fouts. He is blitzed. The pass is caught by the running back, Muncy. He has the first down to the 25, tackle at the 21-yard line. They beat the blitz. They beat the blitz, and Shell again was about 12 or 13 yards deep. And he's the key to the defense, as I mentioned earlier, to keep him out of the defensive flow of things. And you're going to do a good job of moving the football, but they're doing a fine job of putting pressure on Donnie Shell at this stage of the game. It was third and four. He passed to Winslow for a first down. It was third and seven now. He passed to Muncie for a first down. Earlier it was... It was uh, Another third and six, and he passed to Winslow. Look at the switch this time. Jefferson comes on the other side. Look at now. They got Donnie Shell on Winslow on uh, Jefferson. Here's Muncie's hit, popping it straight up the middle and going down to the 15-yard line for six yards. Spinning his way into the arms of Jack Lambert at second down and four. We have 410 left in the first quarter and no score. This is quite a drive by the Chargers. They started from their own 20 after Pittsburgh missed the field goal. There is no score here. And the great thing about it is they had, or had they have at this stage of the game, a very, very good blend of pass and run, and that's putting a lot of pressure on the defense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Joyner and Jefferson come to the left. Winslow is on a wing, and now he comes in motion. Still Second down and four, and straight ahead is Muncie one yard. That's all. He got to the 14, and it'll be third down and three, and Steve Furness stopped him in cold fashion. And that time they're still using five defensive backs. They're using Ron Johnson, Blanc, Shell, Wagner. Jack Up front, Don Masick is the center for San Diego with Doug Wilkerson and Ed White, the guards. Billy Shields, Dan Audick are the tackles. And Dwayne Woodruff is the fifth defensive back. Mike Thomas checks in for the Chargers, and it's third and three from the 14 of Pittsburgh. They'll send it back to somebody over to the left side, maybe, on the notion. Oh, they don't this time. Fouts going to put it up. He throws inside the 10. Incomplete. Incomplete. Off the hands of Greg McCrary, the tight end. Covered by Mike Wagner. Fourth down, field goal time for San Diego. And Bernishka, Ralph Bernishka, comes in. He reports his security gate out on the plaza. Joe Garcia, the security please. Mike Fuller will hold the ball. And Bernishka will try to put San Diego on top. He'll kick it from 23 yards away, a 33-yard try. Pittsburgh missed one earlier. 3.05 left in the first quarter. No score. The snap is right on. Fuller gets it down, and the kick is good. San Diego jumps out front with 3.01 remaining in the first quarter. Time out of the field with a score. The Chargers 3, Pittsburgh nothing. Venerska will kick it off. Larry Anderson deep, flanked by Hawthorne and Pollard for Pittsburgh. This game's off to a rather good start, Henry. Well, we thought it would be, and uh, so far it's very exciting, and um, everything we thought the game would be, uh, that's exactly what it has been so far in the first quarter. Pittsburgh missed the 29-yard field goal. Venerska kicked the 33-yard field goal. The Chargers lead 3 to nothing. 3-0-1 left in the first quarter. Temperature right at the 60 mark. Full house, 55,000. Grass field here at San Diego Stadium, and Jim Tunney, the referee, says, kick it away. And Bernerska boots it. Kicks it high, rather short. Anderson took it on the 7, up the middle, 10, 15, running right, 20, 25. That's all. That's all. San Diego all over him. Downfield first was Hank Bauer, a very good member of their special team. Yeah, it really is. He's a tough, two-fisted guy that uh, really is kind of a sledgehammer back. Does a good job on short yardage situation and very, very outstanding on a special team. Well, the last time Pittsburgh had the ball, they started at their 27. This time they started at the 25. Sidney Thornton checks in. He's in the backfield with Franco Harris. Thornton can give an offense quite a lift. He's 5'11", 230 pounds. First down for Bradshaw. Cunningham, the tight end. He blocks for Franco. Nothing doing. No gain. The linebacker, Ray Preston, cracked right in there as soon as he read run and stopped Harris in his tracks. The defensive line of the San Diego, San Diego Chargers really that time really licked the offensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Had no chance whatsoever, and I thought that the uh, fullback, Franco Harris, was kind of uh, soft trying to run into that time, look for a place to run, and there was no place to go. Second down and 10 from the 25. 
Up front, it's Jones, Kelcher, Johnson, and Dijonet for the Chargers. Bradshaw's going to pass on second down, throws it off to the left. It's caught by Franco Harris. A first down and more beyond the 35, out to the 38, a first down. Bob Horn, the linebacker, trailing him, tackled him. Because of the great pressure that you get from the defensive line, I think it's going to be very important, as I mentioned earlier, for the Pittsburgh Steelers to throw the ball a lot to the backs, get rid of the ball quickly, not wait too long in the pocket, and make sure that you don't get in a situation where you have third and long very often. If that's the situation, why, wow, they're going to be in trouble. How about Washington? When they beat the Chargers 40 to 17, they just kept dropping the ball off to those backs, and the Chargers couldn't stop them. That's exactly what you have to do. You have to be uh, get rid of the ball quickly and get it to the backs. A gain of 13 here is Sidney Thornton straight ahead out to the 40. Got only two yards on the play. Woody Lowe tackled him. Bradshaw is three out of four, 51 yards. He's faced with second and eight, and we have 120 left in the first quarter. The other thing that's very important is to throw play action passes on first down. That's why they want to run the ball as much as they have been running it on first down to make sure they establish that so that they can incorporate the play action pass with a run on first and 10. Steelers with a record of nine and six, trying for their 10th win. It's second down and eight from their own 40. Bradshaw sets the running backs. They are Thornton and Harris. Bell is to the left, Swan to the right. Here's Thornton running right and gets only to the 40 yard line. No game. Bob Horn tackled him after he's been slowed down up front. Louis Kelcher and others had uh, prevented Thornton from getting a full head of steam, and it's third down and eight. That's the one, that's the one deficiency that the Pittsburgh Steelers have. They do not have blazing speed, as everybody knows, to run outside. They're a much better straight ahead running team with play action passes and uh, pocket passes than they are an east west team trying to go sideways. Calvin Sweeney in as a wide receiver. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. San Diego leads three to nothing. Steelers have third and eight from their own 40 yard line. Three wide receivers. Bradshaw is going to pass. That's good blocking. Dumps it off short and it is caught for a first down and now a flag goes down late and a completion to the 45 of San Diego a first down and then the flag it was a late hit Jack I'm sure it was a late hit and they'll tack, they'll tack on a penalty against the San Diego Chargers Lynn Swan caught the ball at the 45 and as Hank Stram said a late hit that's what it was puts the ball down to the 30 special foul late hit number 27 first down Lynn Edwards, number 27, was the one who hit late, hit Swan late on the passing play. Only three seconds remaining in the first quarter, and now uh, they'll start the clock with the snap of the ball, and it'll be the final play of the first quarter. Benny Cunningham, the tight end, is in there. Good time for a play-action pass here on first and ten. They've been running the ball quite a bit. And it give it to Franco Harris, and Harris dies for about... Five near the 25 in the, in the arms of Charles DeJournay. And that marks the end of the quarter. It'll be second and five for Pittsburgh at the San Diego 25 when we come back. The end of the first quarter with the score. San Diego three, Steelers nothing. Each team ran 15 plays in the first quarter. The Steelers had the ball, 8 minutes, 23 seconds. San Diego, 6 minutes, 36 seconds. San Diego, a 33-yard field goal by Panerska. And a 29-yard miss by Matt Barr. Now the Steelers have the ball, and with the help of the only penalty in the first quarter, a late hit. They have second down and five at the San Diego 25. A rather brisk game, Angstrom. Yes, and kind of a brisk night, too, for San Diego. I haven't seen the weather here like this in a long, long time. We had to land in Palm Desert yesterday and then fly up in the smog or fog, whatever you call it. I was looking for Bella Lugosi to jump out of there someplace. It was eerie. Oh, West Coast is sucked in. It's second down and five now for the Steelers. They're on the march again. They have Thornton in the backfield with Harris. And the give is to Thornton. And no gain. No gain. Maybe a yard at the 25-yard line. Louis Kelcher stopped him in very cold fashion. One yard for Thornton. He seems to be getting that ball uh, rather late. It's not quite a delay, Hank, but the handoff is very deep into the line, isn't it? Well, he tries, yeah, you mean into the line, not away right. from the line. Yes, that's right. And and he was looking as he was trying to get the, the ball from the quarterback time at uh, that time, and uh, for that reason, it looked like he was not uh, heading into the hole with uh, full steam ahead like he normally does. Fred Dean checks in for the first time for the Chargers at defensive end. Third and four. He's trying to put pressure on Bradshaw, who steps up. 
and throws incomplete. He tried to get it out to Swan as he was going down, and now a flag has been thrown, and we'll check the flag. It is not intentional grounding because the referee didn't throw the flag. I think they called something on San Diego downfield. Let's see what they call, but I think it would, looks like it might be possibly against the San Diego Chargers. And it is interference against San Diego. will keep the drive going and it'll be a first down for Pittsburgh and the ball is down at their 24 that's interference number 27 defense first down ball against Glenn Edwards he was called for the late hit earlier 14-17 left and a half and a first down at the 24 for Pittsburgh Fred Dean is out Charles Dijonet back in there at the defensive end spot Rocky Blyer comes in for Pittsburgh unusual that uh, there's only two penalties so far and both of them have been against the same person Glenn Edwards number 27 against the San Diego Chargers first down at the San Diego 24 Red Shaw under center Webster snaps the ball here's a give to Franco trying to get outside left he booms down to the 22-yard line. And Mike Williams met him head on and brought him down. Williams, 5'10", 179. Franco Harris, 6'2", 225. And they met head on at the San Diego 22, second and eight. That was a counterplay again. That time he took a step to the right. Rocky Blair was leading uh, the leading block around the play. where They were able to get on the outside of DeJernay, the defensive right end which is really a no-no, but it happened that time, and that's why he made a little yardage on the play. Not much, but he didn't get outside. If San Diego wins this game, they win their division. If they lose the game, they're out of the playoffs. They ought to be able to throw the ball to the back of the flat, uh, the way that coverage is, Jack. Either yeah, that right, right. Y'all back to throw, and there it is. Off the fingertips of Franco Harris. Rushing over to cover with Bob Horn. But you called the play, Hank, and Bradshaw threw a little too quickly. Yeah, he didn't have to throw it that fast, but he threw it very quickly and, and was off balance, falling away when he threw it, and he threw it right into the turf. Tight end checks out for the Steelers. Cunningham and the three wide receivers are T-Bell, Lynn Swan, and Calvin Sweeney. Bradshaw is now four out of six, 51 yards. The fifth back is Jerome Dove. Bob Horn is out for San Diego. Third and eight. 13 and a half, left and a half. Chargers leading three to nothing. On third and eight, Mr. Bradshaw is back to throw. Rush throws and caught at the 15-yard line. By the back, Thornton, he is blasted down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard and a half. And uh, Pittsburgh, trailing three to nothing, has a decision to make here. It's fourth down and a yard and a half. And are they going to go for the field goal? Yes, here comes Matt Barr. Jerome Dove, the extra back for the Chargers, made the hit on Thornton, who caught the ball, a smack at the 15-yard line. In this kind of a game, you know, you have to play it right to the tilt, even though you're out of the race. I'm talking about Pittsburgh. They have to, They have an obligation as professional people to play the game like they were in the race because it affects the standings and what happens, for example, to the New England Patriots, and so they have a strong obligation to do that. Matt Barr missed one from 29 yards. He'll kick this one from 32 yards with Colquitt holding the ball. The snap is a little high. They get it down. This kick is good, and this game is tied. We have a 3-3 three, three tie with 12.47 remaining in the half. Matt Barr is one for two, and he ties it up. With the score, San Diego three, the Steelers three. Let's take time out. Matt Barr will kick off. Bernard Jackson is deep, along with Hank Bauer. Jackson used to play for Denver. They're standing at the five. The score is tied three all. 12.47 left in the half. Hank Stram and Jack Buck with you for CBS Radio. Next Sunday, wild card action. And you'll hear the games here on CBS Radio on the 28th. And happy holidays to all of our listeners on CBS Radio. The kick by Matt Barr is a line drive, and it goes to Jackson on the five. Drops it, fumbles it, picks it up at the eight. He's to the 10, and he's knocked down at the 11-yard 11 11 line. Downfield was Tim Moriarty for Pittsburgh, a defensive back. He's the only member of the Pittsburgh Steelers who ever played for another football team. Moriarty downfield to make the tackle at the 11-yard line. And Fouts, three out of seven, goes back to work. He looked like a little sleepy on that return, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was looking downfield as he was trying to pick up the football that time. And I think any time that you get the ball between your feet and try to pick it up, boy, it's hard to find. The ball's at the 11. Winslow and Jefferson... 
Both come on the wing. Joiner, the other wide receiver. McCrary, the tight end. Muncie, the running back. A fake to him. The pass by Fouts long over the middle and incomplete. Out around the 35. He tried to get it to Winslow, who was in double coverage, led by Mike Wagner. Second down and 10. Take that time inside to Muncie on a play action and then try to throw the ball. They, they wanted to hold the linebacker and then throw over the top of the linebacker between the defensive backs. And uh, Winslow, you know, makes those kind of catches usually. He didn't that time, and it falls incomplete. Boy, this Fouts piled up some statistics during the year. More than 4,400 yards, 30 touchdown passes. Joyner is going in motion to the left, and they create a triple wing formation. Here's, There's Muncie. Muncie running left, and a flag goes down. Muncie is out to the 19-yard line. He picked up seven yards, and the flag is down. Donnie Shaw made the tackle. In of nine yards, tackled by number 58, Jack Lappin. And it is a motion penalty against San Diego. What were you saying about that motion on the part of Joyner, Hank? Well, they have a slot to the right, and they have the tight end on the left side on the wing. And then they send Joyner in motion to the left. That makes three people on the left side, which is a triple wing formation. They camouflage it, and they put a lot of pressure on Shell so they don't let him get on line of scrimmage. They'll make a motion. Offensive right guard, number 67, five yards. Ed White was in motion. Jim Tunney, the referee. Pat Harder, the umpire. Pearl Toller, the head linesman. Line judge Dick McKenzie, Pat Knight the back judge, side judge Gil Mace, and Don Hakes is the field judge. It's second and 15 for the Chargers at their own seven. San Diego's really doing a good job of disjoining the defense. Here comes Shell again. Look at He starts to the left, then goes back to the right. He's on the line of scrimmage now. And on second and long, Fouts drops into the end zone to throw over the middle and incomplete. Very aggressive play uh, by Jack Ham against Greg McCrary. The fans thought it was interference, but the timing was perfect. Yeah, it wasn't a pass interference. Ham did an excellent job that time on McCrary, who was trying to release downfield. And a great thing that he did, he kind of smothered him a little bit coming off the ball, and he didn't have the timing that he wanted. Hank, with all that motion and switching on the Chargers, they're just waiting for Donnie Shell to make one mistake here. That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, he's such a great player. When we talk about... What they're trying to do to Shell, that's a compliment to him because they wanted to get him removed from the running game. But he's a great player. From the end zone, there's a middle. There's long a middle. over the middle. A joiner with a brilliant catch at the 35-yard line. Down at the 36. What a catch. Right over the top of Mike Wagner by Charlie Joyner, who came into the game with 68 receptions. He's limping a bit as he comes off the field. And that was third down and long. Third and 15. You talk about run and shoot offense, that's exactly what this is. They push, put guys all over the field, and the nice thing about their attack is that they create mismatches, and they use the entire width of the field. They spread the defense, and they get the people they want on mismatches, and that, there was a great illustration. Shell again, now he's on the line of scrimmage. Donnie Shell, 31, now he's running across the field. Look, he was on, now he's off the line of scrimmage. Here, Muncie running to the 40, 45, 49, midfield. They're gambling on the fact they're going to throw, throw, throw. They're playing with two linebackers instead of three. And if you can run the ball successfully like they do with a great back like Muncie, they're doing a good job of establishing balance of the run in the pass. And that's why they're doing a good job of running the football. 14 uh, yards on the run by Muncie. Now we have 11 minutes left in the half. Mike Thomas is in the backfield. Muncie has carried eight times, 45 yards, and caught one pass. Watch Donnie Shell is on the line of scrimmage again this time. That's where he likes to play. Fouts is going to put it up on first down. There's Jefferson Rolls again. over the middle and incomplete. Down at the 35-yard line of Pittsburgh, and they have receivers, Hank, who don't mind at all going over the middle, catching the ball, and taking the hit. That time, they had a mismatch with Donnie Shell trying to cover Jefferson. He can't do that. Usually, Shell will cover the tight end. That time, he covered the outside receiver, and it's a tough responsibility. And you have to give San Diego a lot of credit for establishing this kind of a flow and this kind of pressure on the defense of this Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Wagner was over there helping out for Donnie Shell, and it's second and 10 from midfield. 3-3 the score, 10-49 left in the half. San Diego has the ball at the 50. Shell is on a line of scrimmage again this time. And on second down, Fouts looking to throw. Back to throw, no pressure. Throws at the 40-yard line. It's caught by Jefferson. Down to the 35, and that's the first down. Donnie Shell covering. Did they have the same mismatch? Right? Same thing. He's on a line of scrimmage. Scrimmage trying to cover Jefferson. And there's no way in the world he can do it if they don't rush the passer better than what they're doing right now. What should Pittsburgh be doing? 
Well, they could bring in another linebacker. They could bring in another linebacker, take the back out, and try to do it that way and put more pressure on the quarterback by blitzing him some. The ball is to the Pittsburgh 35 and a first down. Ron Smith is the wide receiver with Jefferson. Here he comes in motion with a triple wing. Look at Shell. He's about 12 yards off the ball. Here running with the ball is Thomas. He's to the 30. He's to the 25. He's to the 20-yard line with a San Diego first down. There again, I hate to belabor the point, but the plan is to keep him out of the running game. And he was out of the running game completely. He's 12 yards deep again. There's no force whatsoever from that triple wing formation. They ran to the outside and made a big game. What you're saying, Hank, is that Shell is the key defensive man for Pittsburgh, and the Chargers have him all messed up, chasing all over the field. Yeah, that, as I say, Pittsburgh loves to play it with a sledgehammer kind of attack when you stay in one formation or two, but when you move around, you get those people out of their normal positions, and it puts a lot of pressure on them. Joyner is back in there now, first down at the Pittsburgh 20. Mike Thomas looking for a place to go, gets two yards to the 18. It wouldn't open up for him. Steve Burness and Joe Green were in on the play defensively for Battle Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh likes to, in this situation, on the 20-yard line going in, they like to put pressure on the quarterback by blitzing, and for that reason, it would be wise for San Diego to go back to normal formation and just let them blitz and throw one-on-one -on -one passes, especially to their tight end from his normal position on Donnie Shell. Muncie is in the backfield. 8.50 left in the half. Score tied 3-3. Three -three. Second down at 8. Watch Joyner go outside. There's Shell soft again. They're probably going to run outside. They there do. Old Muncie running left. He cuts it back. 15-10. He's down to the 5. First and goal, San Diego. Hank, as you said, they're going to have to get that other linebacker in there. They're just killing Donnie Shell. Yeah, Donnie Shell is running sideways, east and west, and you might as well have him on the bench. He's your best tackler, best player. But they got him in a position where he has no bearing whatsoever on the force. Force meaning that he comes up to make the tackle. He cannot force and go sideways at the same time. He's out of every running play, isn't he? Exactly right because of the motion. It's first and goal at the five. That was a 14-yard run by Chuck Muncie. They marked the ball at the six. It's first and goal from the Pittsburgh six with eight minutes left in the half. Motion by Winslow and Fouts to Muncie over the left side to the four. Second and goal from there. Joe Green first to get him. It's fun to watch this kind of football because really there's a lot, a lot of strategy involved in it. And of course, I'm always excited about seeing people go in motion and creating formations and, and uh, creating a moment of indecision. And that's exactly what the San Diego Chargers are doing here tonight. San Diego has to win or they are out of the playoffs. If they win, New England is out of the playoffs. Here the, here's another situation. We'll send Joyner in motion to the right. Now we have a timeout call by Pittsburgh. Hank, they probably are as confused as you have indicated with their coverage, particularly on the part of Shell, against the uh, man in motion. Seven and a half left in the half, and it's second and goal from the four for San Diego. There's a timeout on the field with the score. The Steelers three and the Chargers three. Pittsburgh is without linebacker Dennis Winston. He has the flu. He'll not play tonight. Robin Cole is hurt, but he's in there. They have Ham, Lambert, Taves, and Cole. Those are their only linebackers, so they tried to go with the extra back and only two linebackers. And San Diego moving down the field on them. It's second and goal from the four. Seven and a half minutes left in the half. Score tied three all. Jefferson in motion should be another sweep. And Muncie's in the backfield. He gets Muncie starts outside, and he is dropped for a loss on the play. Joe Green got him. Well, Joe kind of, Green got him back at the seven-yard line. Everything was set up nicely, except they didn't block Joe Green. And a penalty on the play, a flag down. At the four-yard, penalty flag on the field. And here is a motion penalty against San Diego. Now, the way they can move the ball, I wouldn't be surprised to see Pittsburgh decline this penalty and make it third and goal from the eight-yard line. They should decline it because a field goal is not going to make any difference five yards deeper. It's a chip shot regardless. They ought to decline the penalty. Right side of the line moving before the ball. Decline. It is declined. And it's third and goal from the eight. San Diego's been very good on their third down plays. But there's not that much room for these receivers to roam. Mike Thomas is in their backfield. Very good at catching the ball. And he joins Chuck Muncy. Now they got a basic formation, anticipating blitz possibly. There goes uh, Jefferson in motion to the left side. Third and goal from the eight-yard line. 
And here with oh, the ball, going to throw into the end zone, and it is incomplete. He tried to throw into heavy coverage to Winslow, and Thomas was wide open going home. He, he, there's, there's wasn't anybody around Thomas. But knocked there. down by Ron Johnson, and he had some help in there. I saw Thomas out of the corner of my eye, Hank. Did he stay free for a long time? Well, he was free. He had to be thrown. The ball had to be thrown to him quickly so he could catch it and run with it. The longer he went, the more the coverage caught up with him, and that's what happened on the play. A 26-yard try by Ralph Benerska, held by Fuller. The kick is good, and San Diego goes back on top. But only by a field goal, despite all that movement down the field. 7-16 remaining in the half. And now with the score, San Diego six and the Steelers three. Let's take time out. San Diego kept the ball seven minutes, 16 seconds. And they ended up with a 26-yard field goal, an 89-yard drive from their own 11. Bernischko will kick it off. Larry Anderson is flanked by Greg Hawthorne and Frank Pollard. San Diego twice has led three to nothing, now six to three. And the kick by the side wheeler is short. And it is down to the deep man. Out to the 20 yard line, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. Out to the 45 yard line for the Steelers is Larry Anderson with Jerome Dove making the tackle. A fine kick return by Larry Anderson who had average 28 yards per return. Because that kick was low, Hank, and because it went right to Anderson, San Diego couldn't get downfield to cover it. Yeah, he caught it on the first hop, and that's uh, very important. He got a good jump on the ball, caught it moving straight ahead, and did a good job of bringing the ball back to the 45. With 7.06 left in the half, Steelers trailing by three. T-Bell comes to the left, and Lynn Swan is to the right. Tight end Cunningham's on the right side. Here's Bradshaw's first down pass. He is set He is set back inside the 40-yard line. Charles DeGernais. San Diego ordinarily has been very good at getting to the quarterback. 58 sacks coming into this game. Bradshaw was just setting up, looking around, and he lost six. And now Jerome Dove comes in as the cornerback replacing Willie Buchanan on the left side for San Diego. Dove on the corner. Along with Williams, Edwards, and Fuller, the safety men. Second and 16. For Pittsburgh. From their 39. And back to throw Bradshaw. Throws to the left sideline. Incomplete to Franco Harris. The linebacker by the horn. Right on his tail. Incomplete. And yeah, with the kind of pressure he's got, he has to throw the ball quickly. Uh, quicker than he normally likes to, especially in this part of the field, plus the fact that he's got to get the ball to the backs and also to the tight end because of the coverage because they're really playing a pressure defense on the outside receiver with two deep. And uh, that makes you want to throw to the backs and the tight end. After the good kick return by Anderson, the Steelers haven't been able to do anything. They're at their own 39, and it's third down and 16. Bradshaw looking for long yards here. It throws over the middle, and it is caught. Now incomplete. Incomplete at the 45-yard line. Incomplete. Rocky Blyer tried to make a shoestring catch, but the official, the umpire, looking right at him, said nope. Fred Dean was in there in that last play. He was not supposed to play because of a full muscle, but he was in there. got good pressure, and he is really a super pass rusher. Here's the first punt of the game. Craig Colquitt out of Tennessee, a 40-yard average, none, none blocked. Edwards and Fuller are the deep men, and Fuller is the deepest of the two. 6.24 left in the half. San Diego will get the ball back. Colquitt kicks a rather high kick and deep, and Fuller took it on the 14. He back to the 15 and uh, spun down at the 19. San Diego will go from there. We have 6.13 remaining in the half. A 46-yard punt, a five-yard return. San Diego has the ball. A pause in the action with the score. The Chargers six and the Steelers three. If San Diego wins here tonight, Houston will play at Oakland Sunday, the two wildcard teams. If Pittsburgh wins here tonight, New England will play at Houston next Sunday, the 28th. Chargers have the ball at their own 19. 
and they lead 6-3. Mike Jefferson come in motion, maybe, to the right side. No, it doesn't look like he's coming this time. He stays in the same spot. Thomas straight ahead. Mike Thomas to the 25, to the 30 as a first down. He's out to his own 32. Mike Thomas, tackle by Robin Cole. Thomas used to do some brilliant running for the Redskins, and he hit a slump. But he has a great deal of capability. One thing you have to do going into a game from a defensive standpoint, you say, well, what are the, what's the best thing they do? We have to stop what they do best. Going into this game, the Steelers are, uh, the approach is very sound, and they have to stop the passing. Then you say, well, if they're going to beat you, they have to beat you with a way that they don't like to do, and that's with a running game. And they're doing a good job of running the ball at this stage because there's only two linebackers in the game and five defensive backs. Thomas over the left side. He works for four yards to the 35, and John Benizek tackled him. Now we have 5.20 left in the half. Four yards by Mike Thomas. 5'11", 190 from Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm really impressed with the way the San Diego Chargers are running the football. This is the best balance we've seen them have. And, of course, it's justified with the way they're running because they have the five defensive backs in the game, as I mentioned. It is second down and six with Woodruff in the backfield defensively for the Steelers now. Motion by Jefferson. Look at Donnie Shell all around, out here by himself. Bounce back to throw. Hit as he throws. Caught by Winslow beyond the 45. First down. He's out at the 48. Run right off by Ron Jackson. And look at Donnie Shell all the way here. The complete opposite side of the field, Hank. Exactly right. And they... Wagner, Wagner that time had to cover. Wagner likes to the free safety. And uh, with the motion the way it is, the strong safety is covering the flanker. And the weak safety, who normally it plays in the hole, is now covering the tight end. And so you got different people doing different things. And it puts a lot of pressure on them. Robin Cole is in now, the additional linebacker. On first down from the San Diego 48. 449 left in the half. Here's Fouts to Mike Thomas. He's to midfield and dives to the Pittsburgh 49. He got three yards. Jack Lambert was there to stop him. On first down, San Diego has 11. Pittsburgh has seven. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. 420 left in the half. Hank Stram and Jack Buck with you. The ball is at the Pittsburgh 49. The Chargers have it. The back is in there for Pittsburgh. Now Winslow, Winslow starts one way, goes back the other, and Fouts is going to put it up. He throws, and it is broken up. The intended receiver fell down, and then Johnson got his hands on the ball, which was intended for Jefferson. Incomplete, and it is third down and eight. Jefferson that time was going in motion to the right side and stumbled over Ron Johnson, number 29. It was an innocent thing, no pass interference on the play, but that's why Jefferson wound up on the turf. Muncy has carried uh, 10 times 60 yards and uh, Thomas four times 34 yards. So the Chargers have rolled up 94 yards rushing. Third down and eight. This time they have a triple wing on the right side. Three wide receivers on the right side. Joy Look at Joyner. Joyner. Pass, drops Joyner. it off short and it is caught down to the 40-yard line of Pittsburgh for a first down by Charlie Joyner. He delayed uh, getting into that pass pattern, and there was no one around him until Ron Johnson brought him down. And they are going to measure. They're going to measure here. That was a third down play, and he didn't get the forward progress that I thought he got down around the 41. You need ball bearings and a knee joints to cover Joyner on that kind of a pass at that time because he went to the inside, got him moving, got the knees turned to the inside, and broke to the outside, and the ball was delivered right on the money. Beautiful play. First down for San Diego at the 41 of Pittsburgh. Boy, it's fun to watch this team play because they create a lot of excitement, a lot of sparks. And you talk about contemporary football, this is what we're seeing here tonight. How's Fouts doing, Hank? Well, he's 7 to 14 for 101. And there have been uh, no turnovers in this game. And very few penalties, and that's the way you like it. Ball at the Steeler 41-yard line. Burness, Banizak, Green, and Greenwood up front for the Steelers. Look how deep Donnie Shell is. He's back there. Here's Thomas Russell down as soon as he got the ball by Steve Burness. Penalty on the play, a flag down. Ball carrier, Mike Thomas. Well, check the flag as Thomas lost a couple. And a motion call against San Diego may be declined. Thomas lost a couple. The left side of that line, Shields, Wilkerson, the center, Don Masek all collapsed, and Furness came blowing in there. I was sure turned it down. 
if I were Pittsburgh. Two fifty-seven offense declined. Second down. Ed White was the culprit. It's declined, and it's second down and twelve. Thomas lost two. We have three twenty-five remaining in the half. The score is San Diego six and Pittsburgh three. You think he'll throw it, eh? <laughs> I'll go way out the limb and say they're going to throw it again. Bob starts Winslow in motion. Look at, and look at now this. Jefferson goes back in motion the other direction. That time he Here's Bob's going to put it up. He throws over the middle and it is caught inside the 25-yard line. And a first down to the 20. Winslow caught it in big traffic. And Woodruff knocked him down. That time Mel Blount was covering the tight end. You see, they got, they're creating so many different problems coverage-wise. That Blount, who plays the right corner that time, they had a triple wing formation on the right side. Donnie Shell, when the man went in motion, ran into his own guy. There was that much confusion on the, on the coverage. The first down of the Pittsburgh 20-yard line. 2.50 remaining in the half. San Diego took over after the Pittsburgh uh, punt. And now they're down to the Steeler 20. Going from our left to our right, they have Mike Thomas in the backfield to give to Thomas over the left side. Slants right to the 15-yard line. Then he's driven back. He got to the 16. He picked up four. L.C. Greenwood drove him back. I'll tell you one thing about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is so involved in trying to recognize what they're doing. It's a good time to run the ball, especially in the middle area. There's a big hole at the middle linebacker when they're in even spacing, and uh, they try to hit at that time, but it was a little too delayed. San Diego may or may not run another play before the two-minute warning. We're down to 2.05, and the 30-second clock will allow them to run it out, and they will. When we resume, they'll have the ball at the Pittsburgh 16-yard line, and it'll be second down and six for the Chargers. Two minutes left in the half. There's a timeout on the field with the score. San Diego Chargers six, Pittsburgh Steelers three. Since taking a punt at their own 19-yard line, San Diego's kept the ball for four minutes, 13 seconds. They've run 10 plays. They've moved down to the Steelers 16. Second and six for the Chargers with two minutes left in the half and San Diego on top on the score of six to three. If they win, they win the championship of the division and they make a wild card team out of Oakland. And if they lose, they make a wild card team out of New England and the Chargers will be out of the picture. Here we go. The wide receivers are Joyner, Jefferson to the right, and Winslow is on a wing left. Jefferson goes left. They like to sweep. Look at the middle. Look at and the middle. And here is Fouts looking to throw, and he throws, and it's caught inside the 10-yard line by Winslow. And that's enough for a first down as they mark the ball at the 9-yard line of Pittsburgh. The middle was very open with the runner of the pass that time. Jefferson was on the right side, went in motion to the left. It left a big hole in the middle. For Winslow, he got the ball on target. First and nine on the nine. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Mike Thomas in the backfield for Fouts. Look at the middle. On first down, Thomas on a slant left. He is wrestled down by L.C. Greenwood. They did a little stunt on the line, Hank, and Greenwood was in the hole. Yeah, and Jack Lambert did a good job. They had a stunt. The tackle came inside. Lambert went out outside, and they stuffed the play and did a good job and guessed right on that alignment. No gain on the play for the Chargers, and we're down to one minute left in the half. You know, one thing that uh, San Diego really hasn't done a good job of, and that is scoring touchdowns when they get in close. Second and goal from the 10. As Thomas lost one, Fouts is going to put it up. He drops it off, fakes it short, throws it away. Incomplete, it hit the upright. The ball's dead when it does that. 46 seconds remaining in the half, and it'll be third and goal from the 10. And you have to be very accurate to be able to hit that upright yeah, like I'll that. Say, is that what he's trying to do? <laughs> well, the Los Altos High School band is getting ready to perform here at halftime. We have 46 seconds remaining in the half, and a third down play coming up for San Diego. Third and goal from the 10. On third down, San Diego has been able to pick up a first down four times in seven tries. And San Diego coming into this game has scored 48 touchdowns, 16 by the run, 30 by the pass. Motion by Jefferson, Fouts back to throw, hands off to Thomas. Thomas is hit and down to the seven-yard line 
boos say the fans it's fourth down and they'll try another field goal mike wagner came up very quickly and made the hit yes he did number 23 wagner really did a fine job of stuffing the play and now they're in a field goal situation on fourth and seven the nurse guy has kicked field goals of 33 yards and 26 yards and this will be another 26-yard try with Mike Fuller holding the ball. Ralph Finerska trying to make it 9-3 with only seven seconds remaining in the half. And the kick is good. And now there are only two seconds left in the half. So they not only got the points, Hank, but they've taken the time away from the Steelers with only two seconds remaining. And now with the score, San Diego 9 and the Steelers 3. Let's take time out. It is Ralph Vernershka, 9, and Matt Barr, 3. Chargers out in front, 9-3 over the Steelers. Two seconds left in the half. One thing that's very interesting, Jack, the run-pass ratio here with the San Diego Chargers is much different than it normally is. So far in the game, they've run 39 plays, 24 runs, 15 passes, and uh, they're doing a very effective job against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's the short kick, and it's taken at uh, midfield. San Diego may have recovered it. They did, but time has expired. A short kick from the 35 out to, out to the 50-yard line. It was recovered by San Diego, but there are no penalties, so it's all academic. And we're at the intermission, and the fans love it as their club goes off with a six-point advantage. The gun is sounded, ending the first half with a score. San Diego Chargers 9, the Pittsburgh Steelers 3. Charlie Joyner honored as the man of the year here at halftime where the San Diego Chargers kept the ball for 18 minutes, 20 seconds. The Steelers had the ball for 11 minutes, 39 seconds. Pittsburgh uh, received the opening kickoff, marched right down the field, but then Matt Barr missed a 29-yard field goal with 9.28 remaining in the first quarter. San Diego got the first points with three minutes left in the first quarter on a 33-yard field goal by Ralph Manerska. And the score was tied 3-3 when Matt Barr kicked one from 32 yards away early in the second quarter. Benershka put San Diego back on top, this time from 26 yards out with 7.16 left in the half. And then they marched down the field after getting the only punt of the game from Pittsburgh. The Chargers went to work, a pass to Winslow, a pass to Joyner, another to Winslow, a cut run by Thomas, a pass to Winslow, and a 26-yard field goal by Benershka. He's kicked two of 26, one of 33, and one field goal by Matt Barr. And that gives us all of the points that we have here in the first half. The Los Altos High School Band is performing at halftime. The score is 9-3 to three here at the intermission with the Chargers on top, and we'll be back with Brent Musburger in just one moment. San Diego leads at the half by the score of 9-3. to three. Brent Musburger, I'm sure you'll agree that my partner, Hank Stram, has really put his finger on the key element strategically here with the chasing around on the part of Donnie Shell. Take it away, Brent. Nice to hear from you again. All right, Jack. Thank you very much. And that certainly is a key part of that game unfolding tonight in San Diego. We've got late word now that Ron Earhart has re-signed a contract as coach of the New England Patriots. And, of course, the sidebar to that story is the fact that all of the Patriots are watching and listening to this game ever so closely tonight because if Pittsburgh can come back in the second half and win, the Patriots are in the playoffs and they're going down to Houston for a playoff game. But should San Diego hold on to that lead, then, of course, New England would be eliminated. Oakland would be hosting Houston in the wild card game. Now, whichever team wins the AFC West title will have the home field advantage all the way to the Super Bowl. Oakland and San Diego both have 9-3 records in the conference, as opposed to 8-4 for Buffalo and Cleveland. Should Buffalo and Cleveland play one another, Cleveland will get the home field edge because of a better record against common opponents. Now, Oakland got into the playoffs with an easy win over the Giants, but there was nothing at all easy about Cleveland's victory over Cincinnati. The score was still tied. Less than two minutes to go, Ron Friedman calls. 1.29 left on the clock. Paul McDonald will hold. It will be a 22-yard field goal attempt. It is up, and it is good. Don Costa puts the Browns in the lead, 27-24. And that was the final score. And you know, they say that good things come in threes, and Cleveland quarterback Brian Seip believes it. On um, Wednesday, I was voted the starter in the Pro Bowl, which I which I consider to be the, the best, greatest honor that a player can receive being recognized by his peers. Then later that evening, my wife gave birth to, uh, to a little girl. And, uh, and we're talking about number three right now. 
three is, of course, a division championship for the Browns. Now, one thing the Browns were unanimous about yesterday, the key man in their operation is Coach Sam Rotigliano. This week could have very easily been the tightest week uh, of preparation that I've ever been involved with. Could have been. But Sam, Sam's sense of humor and Sam's uh, outlook on life in this game of football makes it easy for us to enjoy ourselves, even after a bitter, bitter defeat like we had up in Minnesota last week. And for that reason, Sam deserves all the credit in the world because he kept us loose enough to allow us to concentrate. Believe it or not, when you're tight, it's hard to concentrate. He kept things loose enough this week, which allowed us to prepare like we had to do. And we came into this game in a, in a must-win situation with a lot of young people, and we could have very easily choked. Owner Art Modell agrees with his quarterback's assessment. He knows no more about the X's and O's than any other coach. Probably less than some. But he sure as hell can relate to players, and they relate to him. The Bills won the Eastern Division of the AFC with a tough win over San Francisco. It was their first division title in 14 years, and were they ever happy, especially guard Reggie McKenzie. We're looking down on New York City Jets. We're looking down on the New England Patriots. And also, we're looking down on Burt Jones and the Baltimore Colts. Down, you scoundrels. It's been nine years, people. Nine years since I've been called champion. Coming out of the University of Michigan, I was a champ. Here I am in pro ball for the first time in nine years. I am a champion of the ASU division. It's a great feeling. And Houston wrapped up a wild card spot with a victory over Minnesota. Game didn't mean anything to the Vikes, but Coach Bud Grant was still rather testy afterwards. Didn't seem to hit it off at all with the Texas media. And he was asked if he thought his team would be underrated in the playoffs. Well, maybe people in your business, not in the football business. I mean, if you're coaches, you you see other teams and you uh, you know you can evaluate them pretty well. I don't think anybody's underestimating the Vikings or any other team in the playoffs. Uh, okay, but but how do the Oilers stack up against some of the other teams that the Vikes have played? It's not my job. You're the you guys are the prognosticators and the rankers and the Raiders. Not not I'm just a coach. Tommy Kramer broke the passing record. I said by Matt Harkin. How much how much far away or how close do you think he is? You guys make comparisons. You sit upstairs. I mean, he, he broke Francis. He broke Francis. There's a lot of Francis' record last year in terms of number of you know passes and completions and what the yardage and whatnot. But you people, I get paid for that. Not I get paid for coaching, not analyzing and predicting. But as a coach, how uh, how do you compare the two? I don't. I no, I don't do that. I think we got the message. Couple of AFC notes. Seattle coach Jack Patera got a new contract. Kansas City beat Baltimore yesterday. No big story there, except that less than 17,000 fans showed up for that game for the second year in a row. Baltimore will have the lowest attendance in the league, and the Colts will probably be the next team to go shopping for a new stadium in some other city. Back with a look at the NFC playoffs in just a moment. Dallas needed at least a 25-point victory over Philadelphia yesterday to win the NFC Eastern Division title, and for a while, it looked like they were going to make it. Behind quarterback Danny White, the Cowboys had a 35-10 lead at one point in the second half. But according to White, the Cowboys were not thinking about those 25 points. Nobody wanted to even, even pretend that we would beat them by 25. And uh, so we were just concentrating on winning the game. And, and you never know what's in Coach Landry's mind. You know, our game plan was a very typical game plan. And, you know, we always have a lot of uh, a lot of pass plays and uh, reverses and things. Yeah, but, you know, it's up to him as to whether we use them or not. In any case, the Eagles lost the game 35-27, but they're still celebrating the division championship. And Eagle coach Dick Vermeil is undismayed by the fact that it took a tiebreaker to decide the champion. I now know how Tom Landry felt last year at the same time. We had the same records last year, and they won a, tie, a tiebreaker, and they considered themselves champions. And therefore, I would have to say that in representing the Eagles, we consider ourselves champions. The Rams beat Atlanta in overtime on a corral field goal. Big day for L.A. coach Ray Malavasi. Not only did he get the victory, he got a new three-year contract. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, they've been very fair to me, and I've been here a long time. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a football team like this and have the coaching staff for the caliber of people that I have. And uh, I feel very fortunate to be in Los Angeles. I think it's a great sports town, and uh, all we want to do is go on and win. So the playoffs are set now in the NFC. It'll be Los Angeles at Dallas in the wild card game. And in spite of the loss, Atlanta retains a home field advantage for the rest of the playoffs. Back with more in a moment. Time. San Diego leads Pittsburgh 9-3. And, of course, if that holds up, New England would be eliminated. And if not, should the Steelers come on back, then the Patriots are going to wind up in the playoffs after all, and they would head on down to Houston for a game. And so, Jack Buck and Hank Stram, you know, it's rather dangerous to let Pittsburgh stay in a game like this. San Diego has moved the ball up and down the field, but Jack, as Hank has pointed out, 
the Chargers have been unable to get the ball into the end zone, and that could come back to haunt them. Yeah, that really can be a problem because uh, we've seen them play so many times, Brent, and uh, they do a great job of moving the ball up and down the field. And I think one of the reasons they don't get the ball into the end zone, they try to bring it in there with just a one back kind of an offense. I think they'd be much more effective in close to use two running backs, one tight end in a normal situation. I think they'd be much better. I think they might switch to that, Hank. I had that same observation, particularly that one time when they were down around the five-yard line. They could have used the extra blocker. Oh, no question about that. And they've got people who do such an excellent job at that. And I think Muncie can be so effective with another back in the backfield in that area because he's so big and strong. And he really makes things happen. You know, it's 6'3", 235. He should be able to stuff it in there some way. And, Hank, that middle has been open on that Steeler defense all night long. You've yeah. been pointing it out. I think, I really think that we'll see more of that in the second half, and it'll be interesting to see, Grant, whether the Pittsburgh Steelers elect to stay with the five defensive backs and only two linemen. If they do, why, I think the San Diego Chargers will be successful again running the ball in the second half. Should Brent. be a good second half, Jack. Yeah, we got to go, Brent. Thanks for the uh, visit here, and we'll be talking to you next uh, Sunday. Talk to you then. Both teams back on the field. Once again, the score at halftime is San Diego Chargers 9, Pittsburgh Steelers 3. It's all on the line here for San Diego. I guess you could say it's all on the pass line for San Diego, the way they put the ball up into the air. Hank, there's one turnover at the end of the game, meaningless on that onside kick. San Diego recovered it, but the Chargers are piling up some yards. Yeah, they're making a lot of yardage, 226 to 101, but... It always concerned me when you move up and down the field and you don't get touchdowns, you just get three points. You know, with the score nine to three, the Pittsburgh Steelers are very, very much in this football game and uh, anything can happen. There was only one punt in the first half. That was by Colquitt of the Steelers for 48 yards. And Bradshaw's five out of nine. Fouts is nine out of 19. There have been no interceptions in the game. Muncie. He rushed for 56 yards, Thomas for 39, Harris 20 yards, Blyer 13, Blyer's final game in the National Football League. Matt Barr, who kicked a 32-yard field goal for the only Steeler points, will kick off to the Chargers, who have field goals by Ralph Fernershka, 26, 26, and 33 yards. Bernard Jackson is deep, along with Hank Power for the Chargers. Capacity crowd, about 55,000 on hand. I've never seen such a big high school band as that Los Altos high school band. They must have everybody in the school playing an instrument. Here we go with the final 30 minutes in the regular season. And we'll see what kind of an adjustment the Pittsburgh Steelers make at halftime to try to stop the San Diego Chargers. Here from the three-yard line is Jackson to the 10, running left to the 15, and he's out to the 18-yard line. Tim Moriarty downfield again to make the Steelers tackle, and Jackson doesn't give you the blazing speed that a good many other kick return men show. No, and uh, but he didn't have much of a chance to express any kind of speed that time because they did a good job of covering on the play, and uh, number 41 specifically really did a good job of making a tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's Tom Moriarty who played at Bowling Green. The ball is at the 18 of San Diego, and they send Joyner and uh, Jefferson to the right. Winslow is on a wing left, and in the backfield it's Chuck Muncie. Winslow sprints off to the left side in motion, and Fouts is going to put it up on first down. Looks over the middle, throws to the left, deep, wide open. Up by Winslow, he might score. 45-40, 35-30, haul down from behind, inside the 25, down to the 23, no punt caught him. That time he was in motion, came across to the inside, went back to the outside. Mel Blunt that time was covering the big tight end, one for one. There was confusion on the coverage, very obviously. He ran right by Blunt, was wide open, got the ball to him right on the money, and a big play in the first play of the game, the first play of the second half. He was flat-footed when he caught the ball, I think. Otherwise, had he been moving downfield, he'd have run away from everybody. That yeah, was good for 59 yards, and uh, very good for distance. Big play down to the 23-yard line of Pittsburgh for San Diego. Well, that one hurt. New England, which is rooting for the Steelers. Now, now watch somebody else go in motion to the left. Here Jefferson comes Jefferson. goes to the left. And on first down, Fouts on a delay. Hands it off to Muncie. He's inside the 20-yard line. And he gets down at the uh, 19. And he picked up four yards. The crowd got excited because it looked like it was going to make more yards. But Robin Cole came in and made the hit. The important thing is here again, as I mentioned, the San Diego Chargers, they, they get into this close with the many big plays as they make. They've got to be able to get it out, suck it up, and get in there into that end zone and get seven points instead of just three. 
Woodruff is in as the extra back for the Steelers. Look at that middle. Second and six. Here's Fouch going to put it off. He looks and throws short incomplete. There was coverage on Muncie out there by Jack Ham. You don't fool Jack Ham very often. He tried to swing it out to Muncie incomplete third and six. Yeah, they had a pretty good chance to get Jefferson in the middle area, but he was looking at Muncie all the way. Try to get it on him on a one-on-one -on -one situation with Ham uh, and uh, didn't succeed in doing a good job of the play. Tight end McCrary comes out and Mike Thomas comes into the lineup with Chuck Muncie in the backfield. Now Ball they, at the 19 of Pittsburgh. They still don't have a tight end. They've got three wide receivers. Third and six. Bounce. Straight back to throw. Joiner throws into the end zone and in the caught. First and goal at the five. It was caught by Tom by the wide receiver Jefferson. He was bumped out of bounds at the five. And it's first and goal. Ron Johnson got him, but he couldn't. He rolled him out of bounds, and it's first and goal from the five. A beautiful catch that time. But John Jefferson was in the end zone all by himself that time, Jack. Nobody around him. He came out to the five-yard line and caught that ball. First and goal. That was on third and six. Boy, they've completed a lot of third down passes. This would be a good time to say, listen, we're, got, we're on the five-yard line. We're going to stuff it in there. We're going to run it in there. Here they go. Oh, the eye. Muncie. A flag goes down, and Muncie gets to the three. A flag has been thrown. Very few penalties. None against Pittsburgh so far in this game. Three against San Diego. It was first and goal from the four, and the referee, Jim Tunney, tells us that it is holding against San Diego. That's a killer. Boy, that's murder, isn't it? You know, as big as those offensive linemen are, Billy Shields weighs 275, Wilkerson weighs 262, Masick weighs 253, White weighs 271, Audic, you think they would be able to blow somebody off a lot of scrimmage and not be holding in the process? Number 66, 10 yards. people 6'8 275 you wouldn't think he'd have to hold would you billy shields out of georgia tech the ball is at the 14. san diego's kept the ball for two minutes here at the outset of the third quarter well we'll see if jefferson goes in motion to the right side here here he, he does comes, and they like to run outside look at that middle on first down fouts uh, gives the ball to muncie running right trying to get outside he's to the 10 yard line inside the 10 and out of bounds Bumped out by Dwayne Woodruff. And he went out of bounds at the Pittsburgh 7. You know, they consistently, from that triple wing formation, run outside. They pull the left guard on the play. Muncie does a good job of getting to the outside, but they also could be able to run inside between the tackles from that same formation. They're so concerned about stopping the sweep now, I'm talking about Pittsburgh, that he ought to be able to, from that same formation, same motion, pop it up the middle and make a big game. Muncie can throw the ball too, can he? Yes, he can. The ball is at the seven-yard line of the Steelers, actually seven and a half yards away. Here he comes in motion Second again. Good time to motion. run up. I'm sorry, Jack. Here we go with Fauci. He dumps it off to Munch. He caught it at the five. He's hitting down at the one. He's at the one, and it'll be third and goal. Lambert with the tackle. Saves the touchdown. Is that what you were expecting, Hank? Uh, I thought from that formation they've been doing things outside. I thought sometime along in here they're going to run inside from that same formation because Pittsburgh is really concerned about the formation and stopping the sweep. And for that reason, something inside would be very effective. Obviously, that play was very effective and they did a good job of taking the ball down to the one. But they got to stuff it in there. They got to get tough and blow that ball into the end zone. They got two yards to get two downs to get one yard. Ball's at the one, third and goal. I formation. Thomas and Muncie. The give is to Muncie. Hurdles. Did not get over. Fourth down. Muncie did not get over. It is fourth down. The San Diego players thought he had gotten in there, but the none of the officials gave him the touchdown. The guys in a white shirt say touchdown, but the guys in a black and white shirt say no dice. And now San Diego leading 9-3. to three. They have a big decision to make, Hank, and it looks like they're going to go for the score, the touchdown, rather than the field goal. Well, it's just less than a yard. And rule of thumb, I've said so many times, if it's less than a yard... If you can't make less than a yard with a big, strong line like they have, you shouldn't win anyhow. They ought to go for it, and they should be able to make the touchdown instead of going for the, for the uh, three-pointer. They're going to go for it, and they should be able to make it. Split backs the ball right at the goal line. Fouts big enough to sneak the ball. He sneaks it and gets 
over. Touchdown, San Diego, the first of the night, and that makes it 15 to 3. We have 11.32 remaining in the third quarter, and that's our first touchdown of the night. Some drive, a long pass to Winslow on the first play from scrimmage. A pass to Jefferson at the five, made it first and goal. They overcame a holding call and started from their 14 and went on in for the touchdown on the quarterback sneak. Here's the extra point drive by Bernerska. Fuller holding. Snap is perfect. Fuller gets it down. The kick is good. And the New England Patriots are fading away because now San Diego has a 13-point lead with 11-32 remaining in the third quarter. With a score, the Chargers 16 and Pittsburgh 3. Let's take time out. San Diego got in the playoffs. Houston came here, and without Pastorini and without Campbell, the different Nelson quarterback, and they knocked San Diego out of it. It was a bitter pill for the team and the fans out here. They're leading 16 to 3 now, with 11 and a half left in the third quarter. The kick by Panerskill. Larry Anderson has to chase to his left and took it on the four. Running to the 10, to the 15, he's to the 20, 25, 30 yard line, and out to the 35 comes Larry Anderson with another fine return. And he was tripped up by Frank Duncan, a defensive back, and rather a saving tackle. Yes, it was. Duncan, number 47, did a good job of making the tackle, or else he'd have gone for a longer, longer distance than he did. Well, don't count the Steelers out of this one, folks. You know, Hank, I think the biggest absence on their club is Stallworth, don't you? Oh, yeah, no question about that. You know, they, they had such great balance with the outside receivers. And Smith also did an excellent job. You can't lose those kind of quality people and expect to be as efficient as you normally would. Bradshaw's five out of nine, and he stays on the ground and gives to Franco Harris on a slant right across the 40 to the 42. Following Rocky Blyer, Bob Horn made the tackle on Franco Harris. He got six, seven yards. With it all, the Steelers only trail by 13, a couple of touchdowns, and they go on top. And of course, they've been such a big play team, uh, throwing the ball to their outside receivers, and they get back into the game quickly on many occasions, and we, this thing, as you mentioned, is a long, long way from being over. Mike Williams is out on the cornerback. Dove is playing for San Diego. We ought to be able to throw the ball to his backs the way that defense is lined up. Second down and uh, four. Bradshaw's going to put it up. Get up the back. He throws, and it is caught over the middle by Bell. 35 down to the 30, down to the 26 yard line of San Diego. Jerome Dove made the tackle on Theo Bell. He is no slouch in the catching department. And uh, Bradshaw, I think he did a super job of looking left. Rocky Blair was all by himself on the left side, and then he looked left and threw the ball inside to Theo Bell. A wonderful play by the quarterback, Terry Bradshaw. He had me looking in this direction. Yeah, he did a good job looking off the receiver. At the 26. But he can still throw that back in a flat. The linebacker's way inside. And for that reason, he ought to be able to throw the ball to the back and let the guy run and make some yardage on the play. Bob making a lot of racket. Pittsburgh having trouble here. And Bradshaw's going to put there it he up first down. He looks and he throws into the end zone. And a battle for it and incomplete. Double coverage on Lynn Swan right in the corner of the end zone. Just past the goal line by Buchanan and Glenn Edwards. He had a wide end throw the ball to Franco Harris. He looked at him. Franco Harris was wide open again, but he didn't throw the ball through it right into double coverage downfield. I think he tried to do the same thing. He looked off the back in the flat and tr tried to throw deep, thinking that the defensive backs would be low to sleep by the action to the left side, and he, but they weren't, and they did a good job of staying with their people. You could tell the way that Harris walked back into the dugout that he was disappointed he didn't get the ball back into the uh, huddle there, that he was disappointed he didn't get the ball. It's second down and 10 from the San Diego 26. Now the linebackers on the outside, they don't have the same situation they had to be time before for the linebackers inside. Here's Bradshaw's pass again. He looks, he's rushed, he throws, the flag is down, the pass is incomplete. And we probably have holding. We probably have holding. It was intended for Rocky Blyer. And a penalty coming up against Pittsburgh the very first of the evening. Yeah, he waited for something to happen, something to pop open. Nothing actually did. And uh, any time you have that much time to throw, you, you figure somebody's got to be holding. 
yards marked off against Pittsburgh. Back to the 36. 40, Robert. Number 74. Still second down. Second down and 20. Dean is in the ball game now, number 71, the defensive end. He's an excellent pass rusher. It'd be interesting to see what kind of a job Ted Peterson, number 66, the offensive left tackle, will do on Dean. Fred Dean is one of the pro bowlers, along with Gary Johnson, along with Louis Kelcher. Three of their front four are in the pro bowl for San Diego. And they got three wide receivers in the game. Ball of the 36 of the Chargers, and Bradshaw's back to throw. Four-man rush, sets up, throws long inside the 10, and Bill caught it at the one, first and goal, Pittsburgh. The defensive men, including Mike Fuller, had their back to the play, and a nestle right in the arms of Theo Bell, 35 yards. There was some white shirts around the ball, but it looked like that all the white shirts thought that the other guy was going to make the play. They were all spectators, and they let Bell make the catch right in the middle of the field. And the ball now is on a one-yard line. You're right, Hank. It was Al Fonce and Gaston. They each thought the other was going to knock the ball down. Now we have nine minutes remaining in the third quarter, and the Steelers trailing 16 to three. Appear boys. They're ready to go into the end zone for the first time with Sidney Thornton and Franco Harris in the backfield. First and goal from the one. We've seen Bradshaw throw in this kind of a spot frequently. He gives the ball to Thornton. He's hit. And he lost the yard. What do you think of that? Sidney Thornton had no surge at all. Yeah, none whatsoever. He looked like he was running in quicksand that time. Very slow getting to the hole, and uh, by the time he got there, it was all over. He loses the yard on the play. Woody Lowe, the cornerback, and uh, Willie Buchanan, Mike Fuller all there. Woody Lowe, the first man to get to him. Second and goal from the two. As I indicated on first down, I've seen Bradshaw throw that little... Top pass over there, Hank, to the yeah. side end. Yeah, he likes, he likes to play action pass. He certainly has. They have two tight ends. And it's second and goal. Here's Bradshaw to Thornton. He walks into the end zone. Touchdown. And a touchdown for the Steelers makes it 16 to 9. Leroy Jones that time was really coming across there like gangbusters. They trapped him and walked into the end zone uh, like nobody was there. Good looking play. And that's something that the, pack, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers love to do. They love the trap and they executed the trap perfectly on the last play. Makes it 16 to 9 with 8.14 remaining in the third quarter. And that. Quiets the crowd down here. Barr trying the extra point. He's kicked 37 out of 40 this year. Colquitt will hold the ball. Colquitt gets it down. Barr gets it up, and it's good. And so the Steelers trail by six points with 8.14 remaining in the third quarter. A timeout on the field with the score now. The Chargers 16, Steelers 10. Stram, the absence of Mike Williams on the corner for San Diego hurt him. Theo Bell beat his replacement, Jerome Dove, a couple of times. Once on a pass to the Charger 26, and then one to the one-yard line. Yes, and that happens uh, when you have uh, plenty of time to throw the ball, and Bradshaw did on that last drive. He didn't have much problem at all. He got sacked on one occasion, but uh, most of the time he had good pass protection. Here's the kick, and it comes down to Bernard Jackson. Took it on the one. He's to the 10, 15, 20-yard line. He is out to the 25, 26. San Diego will go from there, and they trail. They lead by only six now. Larry Anderson made the tackle. Ball return to the 26 yard line. 26 yard return. First down for the Chargers. Pittsburgh overcame a holding penalty. Pass to Bell to the 26. Pass to Bell to the one. And then a two yard touchdown run by Thornton. Now the Chargers have to move the ball. They're at their own 26. We'll see if they send Jefferson in motion here to the right. No, they send Winslow to Winslow the right. Winslow to the right, and a first down pass by Fouts. He steps up in the pocket and throws, and it's incomplete. They overthrew his man and almost put it right into the hands of Donnie Shell. He tried to get it out to John Jefferson, incomplete. Not a very good throw. No, it wasn't, and Jefferson was really open in the middle area, but he just threw it over the top, and it fell incomplete. Stops the clock with 7.59 remaining in the third quarter, and the Chargers... Hanging on to a precarious 16-10 lead. We re reiterate, if the Chargers lose, they're out of the playoffs. If they win, they win the title, and New England is out. Five defensive backs, including Woodruff, for the Steelers. They're still committed to the same scheme. There goes Jefferson in motion to the left side. You see Donnie Followed Schell. Followed by Donnie Schell, and here's the running play to Muncie. Wide open to the 30, and Schell came up and made a brilliant tackle at the 30-yard line. What a good tackle by Donnie Schell at the 31. 
Hey, that's the best thing he does, and that's a great illustration of it. He did a super job on the last play. But you want to keep him out of that traffic as much as you possibly can, and really, so far in the game, the Chargers have done that. That was a short side of the field, too, Hank, and they couldn't get Shell far enough away from the ball. That's right. Now it's third down and five. Three wide receivers, including Ron Smith, for San Diego. Triple wing formation on the right side. Here's Fouch throwing on third and five. Caught by Winslow. First down across the 40 and down at the 44 goes Kellen. Winslow tackled by Jack Ham. I can't believe that he's 6'6", 252. Uh, only 22 years old, a two-year pro from Missouri. He runs and, and has the agility and quickness of a guy that's uh, six foot even. Really, he's tremendous. And a first down. 6.56 remaining in the third quarter. That was third down. And a third down pass to Winslow. Boy, that San Diego passing attack can really tear you apart. Robin Cole is in at the linebacker spot now for the Steelers. They can, they can match you with so many different people. There's Winslow in motion to the left this time. Here's Thomas running left. Mike Thomas gets a block and is hit at the 45, and he's down at the 46. Mike Wagner, the free safety, came up, stopped the play after a two-yard gain. If you're going to have one of the two safety men force, you'd much rather have Wagner force than you would uh, Donnie Shell because he does such a good job. Not that Wagner doesn't, but Wagner is a free safety, and with that motion like it is, he has to play the strong safety position, and he doesn't play nearly as well as Donnie Shell. Fouts is 12 out of 23, 190 yards, one touchdown on his own run. Now Winslow comes to the right and Jefferson to the left, second down and eight. That time they had three linebackers in the game. They had Cole in there with only four defensive fouls. Now they're back Throwing at five. Throwing and broken up. Broken up by Johnson on the corner, intended for Winslow and almost intercepted by Woodruff, who made a dive for the ball. It'll be third and eight. Try to force that ball a little bit, Hank. Was there anything else open? Uh, no, it really wasn't. He tried to squeeze it in there that time and uh, was very lucky that it wasn't intercepted. But uh, here again, the Pittsburgh Steelers are changing a little bit. They're going with four uh, defensive back on some occasions and five on others. They take out Jack Ham, put J.T. Thomas in. They have six defensive backs on third and eight from the 46 of San Diego. Bouts is going to put it up. Has time and throws long to the right side. Caught! For a first down at the Steeler 37 by Jefferson. He's amazing, and the defensive backs, including Ron Johnson, Wayne Rudder, for standing there with their hands on his hips, saying, how in the world do you cover him? Yeah, that's exactly right, but they got no jump at all on the ball. Witter stood there and uh, didn't respond to the thrown ball at all. He should have been after the ball when it was in the air, but he waited before until he caught it and then responded and made the tackle. And that was on third and eight. And it allows San Diego to keep the ball. Chuck Muncie checks in. We have 5.45 remaining in the third quarter. The Chargers lead 16 to 10. Let's see if they send Jefferson in motion here to the right. No, they send Winslow again. And here's a give to the running back, Muncie. And behind the block of Winslow, he drives down near the 30-yard line. Winslow, the big guy, gave him a very good block. And L.C. Greenwood and Mike Wagner combined for the tackle, but a gain of six by Chuck Muncy. He's hanging on to the ball tonight, too. Yeah, he's doing a much better job of keeping the ball close to his side, and uh, that's where he has a problem. He fights so hard for extra yardage, and if he's not careful, he keeps the ball away from his body, and that's when he has a, a fumble problem, but he's doing a good job here tonight. The ball is at the Steelers' 30, and it's second down and four with 5.08 left in the third quarter. Now they got both back in the going to put it up on second down. He throws long into the end zone, and a mix up on the pattern and incomplete. Try to get it into the end zone to Jefferson. That ball was, he was supposed to run a post corner, post flag, but the defense responded to the route in good anticipation, and so Jefferson broke the route, tried to hit in the area between the defensive backs, but it wasn't read well by the quarterback. It was an adjustment move by the part of the uh, receiver, and they didn't take it up from the quarterback standpoint. Five minutes left in the third quarter. Boy, on third down, and here comes another third and four. San Diego has been terrific. Triple wing on the left side this time, which means three receivers. Now they send uh, Joyner in motion right. Third down. There's Joyner. The There's pass Joyner. To the sideline. It's caught for a first down by Joyner. He is out of bounds at the Pittsburgh 17. Piece of work, isn't it? I tell you, it's fun to see what's happening here. 
Hank on third down. San Diego has picked up a first down eight times in 13 drives. You just take a look at the defensive linemen of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They all have their hands on their hips, walking back to the defensive huddle, scratching their head, trying to figure out what's going on in that secondary. The ball is to the Pittsburgh 17. That was on third down. There's, now, there's a forced first down play. Wagner is out. Here's the running play. Muncie skipping left down to the 15-yard line. Knocked down at the 14. He got three. Robin Cole, J.T. Thomas tackled him. Steelers are playing without Mike Wagner now, and J.T. Thomas playing that free safety spot. I tell you, this is the first time I've seen San Diego where I've, I really felt that maybe, maybe they have a better chance than they've ever had in the past to go all the way because they have the outstanding running now, and of course they've got one of the great backs in the National Football League, I think, and Chuck Munson. He's just coming into his own, learning the system, doing a good job. They're featuring him more, and with the balance they have here tonight, they're going to be very, very difficult to handle. From the 14, here's Muncy knocked down by the middle linebacker, Lambert, for a loss of a yard. Jack Lambert was in the hole, and just as Muncy got the ball, he was whacked. Fouts has gone over the 200-yard mark in passing here this evening, and he is 13 out of 25. And so he now has 207 yards, 4,600-plus yards in passing but it's third down and eight. This is where they consistently uh, falter. They don't get in for seven points. Now they get a normal formation expecting a blitz. From the 15, Fouts are going to pass. Lofts it into the end zone. Heavy coverage incomplete. Fourth down. He tried to have uh, Jefferson run under it. But covering was Mike Wagner, who was back in the lineup. And it's fourth down. Bernerska will try to get his fourth field goal of the evening. He was good from 26, 26, 33, and this one will be 33 yards. With Fuller holding the ball, the snap nice and low, Fuller got it, the kick sails and goes through! A knuckle ball went right between the uprights. point advantage for San Diego. Nine point advantage with 3.33 remaining in the third quarter. Bernerska has kicked four tonight. A timeout on the field with the score. San Diego 19 and the Steelers 10. Larry Anderson out of Louisiana Tech waits for the Bernerska kick. With 3.33 remaining in the third quarter. 19 to 10, San Diego leads. A high kick and taken by Anderson on the five, running left to the 10, 15, 20, 25 yard line, and out to the 26. A rather well controlled kicking game by San Diego, Hank. They really walled him off over there. Yeah, they did a good job. They kicked the ball to the right, which made the made the uh, back Anderson come up the left sideline. Everybody can converge on him and uh, did a good job from the coverage standpoint, and only gives him one way to go. And again, Hank Bauer downfield to make the tackle. The ball at the Pittsburgh 27. A nine-point lead. The center is Mike Webster, Ray Penny, and Tyrone McGriff are the guards. Ted Peterson and Larry Brown are the tackles. Tight end is Benny Cunningham. They haven't been able to get the ball to him much. Here's a quick snap, and Bradshaw is going to put it up on first down. Zips it over the middle. It's caught at the 40. 45-yard line. And out to midfield is the tight end of the 45 to the 40 and out of bounds at the San Diego 38. Mike Fuller bumped him out. I just had a hunch they were going to go to Cunningham, Hank. They let him alone all night. Well, uh, here again, uh, the way they're playing defensively, we've talked about it many, many times. The tight end of the back have to be open. He got the ball right on the money that time to Cunningham. And Cunningham did a super job of running down the left sideline. Got a lot more out of the play than it looked like he would. But he can do that in first and ten. The linebackers are playing inside to try to stop the run. And for that reason, the backs ought to be open or the tight end should be open downfield. The ball is at the 38 of San Diego. And on first down, trailing by nine. Here is a give to the running back. And the play is good only to the 35. Cliff Grip, who just came in as the middle linebacker, made the tackle on Franco Harris. Franco Harris uh, really is not busting in there like he normally used to. He looks like he's looking for a place to run, and by the time he makes a decision, why, everything's closed up, and he's uh, picking up two or three yards, but maybe he wouldn't be making four or five, and that makes a big difference as far as the selection for the quarterback. San Diego, San Diego's still in a dangerous spot in this game. They lead by nine. Pittsburgh's at their 35-yard line. Second down and seven. 
They got another good opportunity to go after the tight end here or one of the backs. Here's Bradshaw throwing, and it's caught inside the 35 by Cunningham. And he is brought down at the 26, and that's going to be a first down. Boy, he's tough to tackle. It's 247 pounds. Woody Lowe brought him down. Another first down for Pittsburgh. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. This is WNAX, Yankton, South Dakota. The time is 10 o'clock. Ball is now resting at the San Diego 27-yard line. 155 left in the third quarter. San Diego leading 19 to 10. First down Steelers. They're doing a good job of uh, holding Smith up at the line of scrimmage. Here's T.O. Bell. Same thing again. Same thing again this time. They're running. Here's Thornton, and he is tackled after going to the 25. Got two yards. Ray Preston got him. I thought they were changing the play, and we were going to change from a run to a pass. The back would have been open on the play the way the coverage was. Thornton, Thornton good for two yards. Now we have 120 remaining in the third quarter. Second down and eight from the 25. Swan is to the right. Theo Bell is to the left. Martin in the backfield with Harris. Cunningham the tight end. Grossman hasn't played tonight. Here is a quick toss to Franco Harris trying to get outside. Ridden down from behind. And a flag goes down. Harris was tackled at the San Diego 23. And a penalty. Leroy Jones really showed great speed catching him from behind. Franco Harris. And holding against Pittsburgh. Franco Harris at this stage of his career is not fast enough to run that kind of a play. Jack, you need outstanding speed and quickness to get outside on that kind of a toss. And uh, Franco Harris really doesn't have it. Ball well, put down at the 35 of San Diego. Brown, the right tackle, is holding, and it's second down and 18 from the San Diego 35. Scott Perry is in as the extra defensive back now for San Diego. Three wide receivers for Pittsburgh and Bradshaw back to throw. Look at the back. Drops it off short. It's caught by Thornton at the 25. He is down to the 20-yard line. And it's going to be a third down play, third down and four. That's one thing that Terry hasn't done a whole lot of. He likes to get the ball downfield so much, and justifiably so, because he's got those great outside receivers. But the linebackers, they know that. They try to get good depth to help the defensive backs, and for that reason, the backs are wide open like he was on that last play. Third down and four at the 20-yard line. Third down, Pittsburgh has picked up a first down only twice in five tries. Bradshaw is going to throw for it. Looks, throws, and it's incomplete inside the 10-yard line. He whistled the ball off the fingertips of Franco Harris right down the middle. Incomplete. Yeah, it's a little bit too high. Uh, had he thrown a little bit lower, he had a chance. Or had he waited a little bit longer, he was just starting to pop clean beyond the linebacker. Saw the same thing. Cliff Griff, the linebacker, was with him. Had Bradshaw been able to hold it for about one more count, Harris was about to break clean. And now, trailing by nine, yeah, Pittsburgh going to pass up the field goal try. It's fourth and four at the 20. At the San Diego 20. Oh, hold your breath back there in New England. Five defensive backs for San Diego. The fans on their feet. Bradshaw needs four yards to keep the ball. A short drop. Now a deep drop. He looks. He throws. And it is incomplete at the 15-yard line. Broken up by Woody Lowe. Intended for Thornton. Incomplete. The ball goes to San Diego. They got the match they wanted. Woody Lowe that time. Number 51, however, rose to the occasion. Covered Thornton in the flat. Knocked the ball down. And uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are out of business. We have only 10 seconds left in the third quarter. With the score, with the score, San Diego 19, the Steelers 10. Let's take time out. The place, the Keebler Company, Denver. Hey, Bill, our main cracker line is down here in Denver. Oh, now that line makes 720,000 crackers an hour. It sure does, and you people in Chicago have the only part to fix it. It'll be there tomorrow. I'll use express mail service. Overnight, express mail service delivers. 
Hey, the part's here. Let's get back to work. Express Mail Next Day Service. Overnight from over 2,000 post offices, we deliver. Sponsored by your postal service. Hank Stram and I are puzzled as to why the Steelers, trailing by nine, would pass up a field goal try of 37 yards and go for a first down or a touchdown on fourth and four. Yeah, they had to, they had to come up with 10 points in this game, uh, one way or the other, and as long as you're that close, you ought to try for the three, and then come back the next time, and then you have to go for the seven if that score is still the same. But, Hard uh, to understand it. Yep, and surprised now, at that. San Diego's at their 20-yard line, and on first down, Fouts is going to put it up. He looks, dumps it off short, and it's caught. And out to the 24-yard line to Greg McCrary, the tight end. A pickup of four yards, and that'll mark the end of the third quarter. Second and six from their own 24, facing San Diego when we start the final 15 minutes of the game. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. San Diego 19, Pittsburgh 10. San Diego, the fans raising heck here. 15 minutes to go. The Chargers lead 19 to 10. Heck, we better go back to that other play. Here was Pittsburgh with the ball. At the 20, fourth and four, nine points behind, and they passed up the field goal drive. Yeah, it's hard for me to understand why they did that, because as I mentioned earlier, they've got to get ten points to get back in the game, and it doesn't make any difference when you get which of the two, the three or the seven, but when you get down there that close, you've got to come away with at least three, and then hope to get the seven the next time. So they didn't do it. Second down and six from their own 24 for San Diego, with Muncie in the backfield. On second down to give to Muncie outside right. He's to the 25. He is to the 30. He got a first down with hard work. A first down for Muncie in San Diego. If they give him the forward progress, I thought he had. First down. Wagner and Lambert were the tacklers. Bernerska of San Diego has tied a club record with four field goals here tonight. Muncie came out to the 30. Because of their running so much, the uh, Steelers are now playing with four defensive backs and three linebackers. Cole is in the game instead of the fifth defensive back, Woodruff. On first down. Here is a give to Muncie. Is able to get four yards out to the 34. He now has run 17 times, 86 yards. And it was Gary Dunn, the tackler for the Steelers. They gave Muncie forward progress out to the 35-yard line, five yards. Now Muncie is out, and Thomas is in. 14-20 remaining in the game. San Diego leading by nine, 19 to 10. They still have uh, the three linebackers in the game instead of the five defensive back. There you see Shell. He's out of business. Second and five. Look all the room. Put it up, and there's the pass, and it's caught short out to the 35-yard line. And to the 36, and a mild gain by Winslow, tackled by Ron Johnson. It'll be third down and four. Ron Johnson really did a good job of coming up and being under control. He was in a good tackling position. Winslow tried to give him a little juke inside and outside, but didn't succeed. And uh, then he finally got help. I'm talking about Johnson from Donnie Shell, number 31. Well, this is where San Diego has been terrific tonight. On third down plays. And they have third and four from their own 36-yard uh, line. Well, you got Shell, look at him go in motion this time again with Jefferson. Cubs is going to put it up. He looks, drops it off short. It's caught first down, out to the 45, and the play is stopped at the 46. How in the world do you stop Winslow on that kind of a pass play? That's third and four. Yeah, they, yeah, they keep the people around. You don't know where they're going to come from. They dazzle you with formation in motion. And they're not dropping the ball, Hank. No, and of course, you know, they have no reason to. The ball is right on the money. Now, now they go in, now Cole comes in, now they will go back with the uh, three linebackers and four defensive linemen and four defensive backs anticipating anticipating the run. Muncie is back in there, the ball's at the San Diego 46, they're grinding it out on this drive, Muncie runs right, cuts back, he is hit, he gained only about a yard or two over the right side, in the arms of Jack Ham. From that formation, I've mentioned it several times, the middle, the middle looks like it would be very vulnerable. I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers are so concerned about stopping the outside from that formation. The middle linebacker is very deep, Jack Lambert, and for that reason, they ought to be able to do some work inside. Once he out, Thomas in. 12-20 left in the game, San Diego leading 19-10. Five defensive backs for Pittsburgh. On the obvious passing situation, there's Winslow going to the right side. Jefferson will come back here. There he goes. There you see Donnie Shell. 
And here is Fouts under the litter. Mike Thomas to midfield. He is down inside the 45. He gets the first down. Down near the 43-yard line. It's another first down for San Diego on the draw to Mike Thomas. Yeah, and he popped that nice and clean right up the middle, and that's a good area to hit because of the way they are so concerned about the people going sideways in motion and worrying about their coverage. Boy, if San Diego hangs on to this ball, Hank, and there's 11.35 left in the game, they lead by nine, and any kind of points, including a field goal, will really put them in great shape. And not only that, they'll kill the clock the way they're moving it now. Winslow has caught nine passes, 147 yards. Joyner's caught three, Jefferson two. Flag now, down on the play. Here's Hank Bauer in the game, and the running play to Mike Thomas carries to the 40, and a flag goes down. Mel Blunt was the tackler. In a three yards. Flag it was first down. Offside Pittsburgh. That'll make it first and five. At the 38. Referee Jim Tunney marks off the Arctic. Encroachment. Joe Green lined up offside. Coach Greg McCrary, the tight end, is back in. First and five, San Diego. Joyner and Jefferson come left. Winslow is on a wing. McCrary, the tight end on the right side. And timeout called by the quarterback, Dan Fouts. We have 11-17 remaining in the game. San Diego has the ball. They have first and five at the Pittsburgh 38. And with the score, San Diego 19, Pittsburgh 10. Let's take time out. If San Diego wins here tonight, they'll be the champion of the division. They'll make a wild card team out of Oakland. They will eliminate New England from the playoffs. And Houston will play at Oakland next Sunday. Meanwhile, we have Los Angeles playing at Dallas on Sunday. And CBS Radio will cover both games for you. The date will be the 28th. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to all of our servicemen and women tuned in on American Forces Radio. First and five, San Diego at the Pittsburgh 38, motion by Jefferson. And a give to Mike Thomas. He's going to throw the ball downfield, and it is incomplete at the 15-yard line. Charlie Joyner says I caught it. The field judge said, no, you didn't, sir. Now Blunt covering, and it was a dangerous pass thrown by Mike Thomas. I, I really thought from this angle that he caught it, but evidently he did not because the official was right on the scene and called it immediately. Oh, yeah, very obviously, looking at the replay, he did. He was way short. Thomas pass incomplete on first down, and it's second and five. The ball still at the Pittsburgh 38 with 11-11 left in the game. Fouts under center, motion by Winslow, the give to Mike Thomas, picks his way up the middle, a flag goes down, and Thomas is down to the 26-yard line, and we very likely have holding called by the umpire against San Diego. J.C. Thomas came up and made the tackle on Mike Thomas, and a penalty call against San Diego. The complexion of the game has changed tremendously. Early, we didn't get many penalties at all, and now suddenly we're getting a lot of them, and uh, the officials evidently are detecting some holding that they didn't see early in the game because the technique has to be the same. Holding, 62 offense, still second down. And Masick, the center, was holding. I think, you know, it was first and five, and they got cute with the pass by Mike Thomas. There was no need for that. No, exactly right. And uh, the last time we saw them play, they ran an option play, remember, end of the, and that was intercepted. Mm-hmm. 11.06 remaining in the game. Second down and 15 now at the, oh, at the 48 of Pittsburgh. I don't know why you let anybody else throw the ball when you have the best passer, one of the best passers in the league, in Fouts. Second down, motion by Jefferson. Fouts back to throw. Now he delays it to Thomas. Thomas is hit and dropped at the 46. It'll be third down along, third and 13. Joe Green made the tackle. Tackle by number 75, Joe Green. Third down and 13 for San Diego. I tell you one thing, Shell is going to be a very tired player after this contest. He's never run so much in his life and never really accomplished very much because he's going sideways all the time. Ball's at the Pittsburgh 46. 
And I mean that as a compliment to him because they're doing that to keep him out of the play because he is such an outstanding defensive player. Joyner, Jefferson, Smith, all wide receivers for San Diego, third and 13. Fouts puts it up to the sideline into heavy coverage, incomplete, and a great defensive play was made against Jefferson by Mike Wagner. And now Pittsburgh will get the ball. And I'll bet when Pittsburgh gets the ball now, Hank, with 10.25 left in the game, I'll bet they wish they'd have kicked that field goal moments ago. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I, it's, it's always a disaster when you're down there and have an opportunity to get points, whether three or seven. You got to come away with points, and they came away with nothing. Fourth and four, and they didn't succeed in making the first down. Rick Partridge is kicking, and Theo Bell stands at his 10 waiting for it. This is Partridge's first punt of the night. He'll get it away from his 45. He's not molested, and he kicks the ball terribly. High, short, bounces inside the 25, and it's down inside the 25 by San Diego. Partridge had a 39.2 average. The fans let him have the business as he kicked the ball very, very short with 10-16 remaining in the game. A 24-yard punt. There's the timeout on the field with the score. San Diego 19, the Steelers 10. Each team has punted one time. San Diego has 23 first downs. Pittsburgh 12. Pittsburgh's at their 25. Trailing by nine points. 10-16 left in the game and out they come. Swan to the right. Theo Bell to the left. Tight end Cunningham on the right side. On first down. Here's a fumble and Pittsburgh got it back. But they lost three yards. Frank O'Harris was right on top of Bradshaw when he attempted to hand it off. And they got it back at the 22 and lost three. Lost a two yards. Well, they mark it down on the... Well, it is the 23-yard line. Second down and 12. Steelers a long way to go, trailing by nine. Swan right, Bell left. Cunningham on the right side. Webster, the center over the ball. Finney and McGriff, the guards. Brown and Peterson, the tackles. Here's Bradshaw's pass to Harris. He is hit for a loss on the play and dropped by the middle linebacker, Bob Horn, at the 18-yard line. What a difference, Hank, when you have linebackers who can stay with those running backs. Yes, and he read it, read it perfectly, perfectly that time. And uh, here again, Franco Harris has not run that kind of a play that well. You have to have somebody with great quickness and speed who can operate efficiently in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Franco Harris runs so well straight ahead. He does not do that kind of thing well. And was nailed to the cross by Bob Horn. Third and 16 with Bell, Swan, and Sweeney, the wide receivers. Scott Perry is the extra back for San Diego. Bradshaw's going to throw. A little pressure. He steps up and throws long and midfield and incomplete. Incomplete at the 45-yard line intended for Bell. Well covered by Willie Buchanan on the corner. And Pittsburgh will have to punt with 846 left. And Theo Bell made a gallant effort to try to come back and make that catch. Just didn't do it. Buchanan was right on top of him that time. Did a good job defensively. Mike Fuller goes back to get Craig Cole with second punt of the night. First punt was 48 yards. Edwards goes back as a blocking back for Fuller. They're a man short. Here he comes. And here is the kick. And it's out near midfield. It bounces and goes past Fuller. Inside the 40, down to the 36, down near the 35 of San Diego. Fuller was afraid to take a chance, and he did the smart thing, Hank. It cost him yards, but he backed away. I don't know why he didn't catch it. No, I did a poor job, Jack, really, of what he did, and he didn't get a jump on the ball. And you're right, with the situation like it was, he was smart to get away from it, because he didn't get a jump on the ball and had no chance whatsoever to make the catch. He got away from it, let it bounce, and he lost about 15 yards on the play. Ball's marked down on the San Diego 35, 836 left. With the score, San Diego 19 and Pittsburgh 10. Let's take time out. San Diego wins here tonight. They'll win the division. They'll make a wild card team out of Oakland. They'll eliminate New England. And San Diego will also get a home game. Here's the toss to the tailback, Muncy. Muncy's out to the 40-yard line and one down at about the 43. Big yard for the running back. The clock continues to run. Mike Wagner with a strong tackle. We're down to 8.20 left in the game. The San Diego Chargers really made a very wise decision uh, early in the season by being able to get Chuck Muncie. Chuck Muncie has really added a great running dimension to this football team and has given them the balance they've been seeking, and uh, he's really made a tremendous difference. He just picked up seven yards 
Out to the 43-yard line of the Chargers. Jefferson goes in motion. And Muncie carries again this time to the right side. And he is hit for a loss on the play. Johnson came up very strong and made the tackle. So Muncie lost a yard. And the way they're chasing on that formation, the quarterback could really keep it himself, Jack, and scamper around the left side. Even if he didn't make a lot of yardage, he'd at least keep that defense honest and keep them from chasing as fast as they are right now at this stage of the game. Fouts has uh, rushed only 23 times this year. His two touchdowns. And he has a zero rushing average. That's a good reason why he's not going to run that play. <laughs> the ball's back at the 41, and it's third down and four. Look at that middle. Somewhere along the line, they ought to run something in that middle area. Outside because it's really low. He dumps it off short, and it is caught by Muncie to the 45. He is out of bounds near the 48 and appears to have a first down. He does. Muncie knew that he had to go out to the 48 for the first down. And before Wagner pumped him out, he got a first down for San Diego. You know, he's, he's got great speed, good size, and he's one of the strongest runners I've ever seen going down the sideline. He's very, very difficult to knock out of bounds, and he doesn't run out of bounds. He makes you knock him out of bounds. Now we have 7.09 remaining in the game. The clock is stopped. And perhaps the Steelers are too. Mike Thomas is in. Muncie is out. 7.09 left. San Diego leading by nine, 19 to 10. On first down, John Jefferson in motion. And here's Fouts with a first down pass. Swings it off to Mike Thomas. He's to the 45. He's to midfield. He's down to the 45 of Pittsburgh, down to the 44. And he got about eight yards on the play before Lambert tackled him. A lot of missed tackles by Pittsburgh. Eh? Well, he's, like, he's got such good, great uh, quickness and happy feet and good feet that it's hard to tackle him on the open field. He's a very busy runner. Now we're down to 6.45 left in the game. They're sweating it out in Oakland. They're sweating it out in New England. And Pittsburgh already out of the playoffs. Second down and two for San Diego. Six and a half minutes left. They have the ball at the 44 of Pittsburgh. And here is Thomas. He gets a first down to the 40-yard line. Mike Thomas tackled by Gary Dunn and Jack Lambert. But another San Diego first down. That's their 25th first down of the night. That little rascal did a good job that time. He started on the outside, and there's a great illustration of his quickness. He reminds me a little bit of Mike Garrett. Mike was a great uh, runner from our uh, days at Kansas City. A tremendous quickness, great eyes, good vision, and was able to make those kind of adjustments and stretch the one, two-yard gains to the six- or seven-yard gains, which is very important. 5.50 left in the game. The ball at the 40 of Pittsburgh. A first down, San Diego, taking a lot of time on the 32nd clock before the snap. Here comes uh, Joyner, Joyner in motion. Joyner in motion, and Fouts delays the ball to Thomas. Lambert nailed him, no gain. Jack Lambert got him right at the 40, but the clock is killing the Steelers right now and killing the New England, the New England Patriots in the process. We're talking about quick feet. Remember Abner Haynes, okay. what a great runner he was. Mm -hmm. uh, we put in the I formation for him in 1962 when everybody thought it was, we were crazy because uh, at that time, nobody was using the I formation except the Dallas Cowboys on occasion. But he did a super job of running from the I formation because he could change direction so well and had such quick feet. And it is Thomas and Muncie in there. The tight end is out. Second and ten. Fouts is going to put it up. They're not bashful. Long over the middle. Caught inside the 25, inside the 20. Down to the 16-yard line. Woodruff made the tackle along with Wagner on Winslow, who is something to behold here tonight. Oh, he's a piece of work. He's a, he's a dynamite receiver, and of course... He's a loose tackle because he's so large at 6'6", 245, and runs patterns like an outside receiver. Great hands, terrific touch, very intelligent receiver, in that they move him around so much, and it's hard to locate where he is. You get a variety of guys trying to cover him. It's a mismatch, and there was a great, great illustration of how open he was in the middle area. At the 16 of Pittsburgh, only 420 left in the game. First down, San Diego. They don't sit on the football, I'll tell you that. They're in the eye, and they give it to the tailback Muncie following Thomas. He blasts down to the 14 and got only two yards. Joe Green met him head on. Muncie, two yards. This would be a great time. They've got two running backs in the game. This would be a good time to really take a tough, hard-nosed approach and make this San Diego Charger team stick it into the end zone with a running game. They've got, that, they've got a big, strong offensive line. They don't do that very often. But somewhere along the line, they have to do it. And this would be a good time to give them some practice and give them some hard work. They're killing a lot of people now. San Diego leads by 9, 19 to 10 with 3.40 left in the game. Second and eight from the Steeler 14. 
two running backs, Thomas and Muncy. And on second down to give to Muncy, running right, Joe Green slows him down. He breaks the tackle, gets to the 15. He is out of bounds at the 10. And it's going to be third down and four, bumped out by Jack Hamm. And it stops the clock with 3.28 remaining in the game. They had the angle on him. It looked like they were going to nail him on the sideline. He ran right around everybody, outsped him down the field, and uh, now it's third and four. And here again, they've got two downs. They get four yards, and uh, I would make this team get tough to stick it in there and make that first down by running. And now the clock is stopped with 3.28 remaining in the game. Leading by nine, a field goal would force Pittsburgh to get two touchdowns to win it. And they've been able to get only one touchdown on it. Third down and four. They'll throw it. They usually do. Jefferson in motion. Bounce. No, they're going to run it. Here's Muncy running left. He's to the in. 10. He's in. Five. with this team now that I've seen the way they've run the football. They haven't been able to do that in the past. Who was Muncy? They'll be able to do it. They're going to be a heck of a threat in the playoffs. 3.22 remaining. San Diego has increased their lead to 15 points, 25 to 10. Only three passes in that drive, seven runs. That's what Hank Strand has been talking about. They've changed the character of the San Diego team. Fuller holding, Bernerska kicking. It is good. Now, Pittsburgh needs two touchdowns and a field goal to win it. We have 322 left to pause in the action with the score. San Diego 26 and Pittsburgh 10. This place has been rocking. The Chargers getting all the fan support they need. They lead 26 to 10. Bernishka will kick the ball. Anderson deep. Paul Thorne followed alongside. Good thing they don't have a dome stadium here because they blow the top of it right off that dome I'll with the say. racket and the response that we're getting here from the San Diego Chargers. I'll say it looks like they've won the division. It looks like Oakland is a wild card team. It looks like New England's out. It looks like it'll be Houston at Oakland next Sunday. Here's the kick. It's uh, short. Taken by one of the upmen to the 25 to the 30. Hawthorne out to the 35-yard line and tackle at his own 35. Win or lose, I'm glad uh, glad for Ron Earhart. I mentioned this earlier, but I understand he got a new three-year contract today, and it's a great compliment, I think, to Billy Sullivan. And their people, they're, they're super, super people, a great organization, and they're doing the right thing by giving him more time because uh, they've got an excellent team. They believe in them strongly, and I'm sure they're going to do a super job in the future, just like they have in the past. It's unfortunate, really, that they're not in the playoffs. Ball's at the 36 of the Steelers. They have three wide receivers, including Sweeney. Bradshaw's going to put it up. He throws to the tight end off the hands of Penny Cunningham. It was wide open, and he dropped it at the San Diego 45. He got a look at Mike Fuller, who was coming in on him, I think, took his eye off the ball just long enough for the ball to be incomplete. 309 left. Bradshaw, 12 out of 20, 186 yards. San Diego wins here tonight. Houston will play at Oakland Sunday, the two wild card teams. Bradshaw on second and ten. Back to throw again. No pressure. Steps up. Now there's pressure. He runs out of the pocket. He's on the move to the 30. Throws on the run. It's caught at midfield for a first down for Pittsburgh. Going up high to get it was Theo Bell. Blasted immediately, held the ball. I don't think this Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Steeler team isn't going to continue to try right to the very end. That's the kind of people they are. They haven't won championships like they've won without great character, and they're expressing it here with, uh, in the waiting minutes of this football game. Yeah, now there's only 2.37 remaining in the game. The ball at midfield, and Bradshaw's first down pass. He looks left, throws left, and a diving intercepted for the ball, and it is incomplete. Complete inside the 45 of San Diego. Woody Lowell, who ran one back for a touchdown this year, made a diving try as Cunningham, and he battled for the ball incomplete. Yeah, I thought he had it from here, but evidently he didn't. That stops the clock with 2.28 remaining in the game, and uh, San Diego on top by 16, 26 to 10. We can tell you a little more about the playoffs, but we'll wait until 
victory is assured on the part of one team or another. A lot can still happen, although the Steelers trail by 16. Here is Bradshaw back to throw. Swings it off incomplete. Way off the mark to Franco Harris. Franco, five left. Franco Harris stopped on the pattern. He anticipated being uh, the ball being thrown to him at the dead spot. And, of course, Bradshaw thought he was going to continue to run, threw it out in front, and, of course, there was no way he could make the play. I think I don't want to belabor the point, but I guess I'm doing it. Fourth down and four at the San Diego 24. Pittsburgh trailing by nine at the time, and they passed up the field goal, and that changed everything around because San Diego came right back and got the touchdown. Yeah, very surprised at that call. I, I, it's hard to understand why they didn't go for the three-point play. Right, John, third down, back to throw. He's rushed. He is away from the rush. Throws on the run. Incomplete. He tried to get it out to his receiver. He was nowhere near it. The fans are booing because they thought it was intentional grounding. He tried to get it out to Rocky Flyer. It's fourth down. Pittsburgh is going to have to go from scrimmage on fourth down. Now we have 217 left. A lot of pressure that time by San Diego. Jim Tooney that time was right on the play, watching for a possible uh, late hit of some of some kind on the quarterback, but uh, nothing like that occurred. Pittsburgh shows the punt. This will be the third punt for Cole Quit. If he does kick the ball, I don't know why in the world they're kicking it, Hank. Do you? No, I don't either. I really don't either. I must have got to do something from the kick formation. Oh, well, he kicks it away. San Diego will get it. It's kicked high, and uh, it bounces inside the 10, and it is downed by the Steelers inside the 5. San Diego is way back at the 2.06 left in the game. On the 5-yard line, a 47-yard punt. A timeout on the field with a score. San Diego 26, Pittsburgh 10. Six left. Fouts is 21 out of 37, 308 yards. That's the eighth time this year he's gone over 300 yards passing in a single game, and that is an NFL record. Hank, I know with 206 left in the half, you like the offensive approach on the part of the Chargers tonight. Well, no question about that. Of course, I like their approach anyhow. It's a very contemporary approach, one where you move move the people around, make people read, respond, and react on the run. Uh, I like to see that kind of football, and I think it's very progressive, and I think Don Coriel and his staff have really done a super job. Mike Thomas from the five takes it up the middle and goes to the seven or eight-yard line, and that takes us to the two-minute mark. Two minutes remaining in this final game of the regular season, and it is 26-10 to 10 in favor of San Diego. A pause in the action, and let's take time out. Pittsburgh has rushed for only 29 yards tonight. San Diego's Chuck Muncie has rushed for 112 yards. Mike Thomas just picked up three. And it's second down and seven for the Chargers at their own eight with two minutes remaining. This will put San Diego in as the champion of their division, make a wild card team out of Oakland, eliminate New England. Houston will play at Oakland Sunday. If Oakland wins, Oakland will play at Cleveland on either the third or the fourth, and Buffalo will play at San Diego on either the third or the fourth. Here they stay on the ground, the Chargers do, and only about a yard over the left side to Thomas. And he was tackled by Gary Dunn. And talking Time about called by the Steelers. And talking about Buffalo, what a great job Chuck Knox and his fine staff, Tom Catlin, and all those fine people have done with the Buffalo Bills. Lehman Bennett, the same kind of a situation okay. with the Atlanta Falcons. No gain on the last play. Third and seven, San Diego coming up. Timeout, Pittsburgh, 156 left. 16-point lead for San Diego. Let's listen to this. Let me repeat what I said a moment ago. San Diego wins here tonight. Houston will play at Oakland next Sunday. If Oakland wins, Oakland will play at Cleveland on either the 3rd or the 4th of January, and Buffalo will play here in San Diego on either the third or the fourth. Meanwhile, in the NFC, Los Angeles will play at Dallas on Sunday. If Los Angeles wins, Los Angeles will play at Philadelphia on the third or the fourth, and Minnesota will play at Atlanta on the third or the fourth. And if Dallas wins, Dallas plays at Atlanta or Minnesota plays at Philadelphia. So things are much more clearly defined what with 
The Steelers already out of it, and the New England Patriots fading out of it, 156 left. And what a great job Sam Rotigliano and his Cleveland staff, Jim Garrett, Richie Kotai, that fight bunch have done with their football team. And of course, Bud DeGrant also with the Minnesota Vikings. Here's third and seven, and Thomas runs across the 10 out to the 12. San Diego will have to punt, but they're not concerned. They lead by 16. Three-yard pickup by Thomas. 148 left. And now the Steelers are down to one timeout, as they call a timeout here. Punting time for the Chargers and Rick Partridge. What do you think? Partridge kicked a 24-yarder a while ago that caught the attention of the fans. What would you do here if you were the mentor, Jack? Would you go after the kicker? Would you try to block it, or would you just let him kick it? Well, I think as close as it is, I think you might get a touchdown out of it. If you block it, I'd, I'd chase in after the ball. You know, you're out of it anyhow, uh, and even if you're running the kicker, so what? Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense to go after this. You've got to score quickly, somehow, some way, and that would be one way you could do it if you could block the kick, fall out in the end zone, and get a quick touchdown with 148 left of the ball game. Theo Bell is out in midfield. There's the kick by Partridge. It's a good one. Hooray, say the fans. And Bell takes it on the 38. He's to the 40, running up 45, and goes out of bounds at the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. Fine punt by Rick Partridge out of Utah. Now we have 138 left. There was no rush on the punt at all. He had plenty of time to kick it. They had a return on. 138 left in the ball game. Rick Partridge punted the ball. I hope that's the last I hear of the Partridge between now and Christmas. That song drives me nuts. 138 remaining in the football game. Partridge in a fair tree. 26 to 10. The Chargers on top. And Bradshaw goes to work once more. Very few rushing yards for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw going to throw it. Stands at his 40. A lot of time. And he threw behind the intended receiver. Theo Bell. Theo Bell looks like he slipped coming across the middle that time. His footing uh, got away from him, and uh, he slipped and fell, and the ball was thrown behind and falls incomplete. What kind of a night has Bradshaw had? Well, Terrence has had 13 and 24 for 201 yards. The score at halftime was 9 to 3 in favor of San Diego. They've scored in every quarter here tonight. Three in the first, six in the second, then 10, then seven. Steelers got three, and then a touchdown three is in the second quarter, then a touchdown, their only TD of the night in the third quarter. My old dear friend and uh, one of the great coaches in college football, Andy Gustafson, told me when I became the head coach of the Dallas, Texas, and Kansas City Chase, he said, listen, if you're in it long enough, it'll all come back, it'll all happen to you. Here, Bradshaw throwing the ball to Lynn Swan, who caught it at the 30-yard line of San Diego for a first down, and he's wrestled down. And drilled all the way back to the 35. And I think of that situation at this particular time watching Terry Bradshaw because we were playing, Kansas City was playing in Pittsburgh years ago and we were in our prime and kind of slipping a little bit. He came into the locker room before the game and said, Coach, not on the field, and said, Coach, you've had it long enough. He said, we're a young team and we're going to take it away from you. We're going to win today. They did. Here Bradshaw throwing into the end zone and Swan incomplete. He ran into the defensive back. Mike Fuller had good position on him, and uh, there was a mild collision in the end zone, incomplete. I thought that would motivate our team, and I told our team about it, and they, <laughs> they felt strongly about it and played a, a great football game, but in spite of that, we still lost. Now I look at Terry Bradshaw years later, and the same thing has happened to their team, and uh, they're out of the playoffs, and they're going to have to look to the future to get back in. You know, Mr. Rooney, the owner of the Steelers, told me at the very outset of the season, I think he said, we're getting a little old. I think that's the answer with regard to the Steelers. Yeah, they, they, they have gotten a little old, but I think the big thing really that made a big difference in their football team this year, they just lost too many outstanding people uh, during the course of the season, and you, with the competition as keen as it is, you just can't survive it by losing that many people. Second and 10 at the San Diego 30. Bradshaw's next pass. He looks, he looks, he looks. He throws long inside the five. And it falls incomplete. They try to get it to Cunningham, the tight end. And it was Scott Perry covering on the play. Incomplete with 55 seconds left in the game. And it'll be third down and 10. The score is San Diego on top, 26 to 10. San Diego wins the division. Oakland becomes a wild card team. New England is out of the playoffs. And Mark Malone, number 16, is in the game now. He's a quarterback and a big one, a good one, from the University of Arizona, Arizona State, I should say, but he's outside, going to play a flanker position to give the, the outside receivers a little relief. 
Number 60, Mark Malone on the outside. Pittsburgh only 49 rushing yards tonight. San Diego 172. Mark Malone on third and 10 is back to throw. He sets up and throws, and it is caught inside the 15-yard line, down to the 10 for a first down for the Steelers. The pass was caught by Theo Bell. And Mark Malone, 6'4", 223, 20-year-old rookie from Arizona State, and he's going to be a super quarterback in years to come. 30 seconds left as Malone's back to throw again. He throws it out short to Franco Harris. He's to the 5. He's down near the 3-yard line. It was number 32, Franco Harris. Franco Harris catching the ball from Bradshaw, who was back in there on that trip. Yeah, Malone is playing a receiver on the outside, as you know, Jack, and he's uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to watch him come in. He's trying to help the receivers, give them a little blow, but he's big and he's strong, and he's a good athlete. 6'4", 223, a rookie from Arizona State. Pittsburgh has used their last time out. A pass play from Bradshaw to Harris took the ball down to the San Diego three. With a score 26 to 10 and 25 seconds remaining in the football game. So a pass to Bell and a pass to Harris and the Steelers are knocking on the door. But it won't make much difference. Capacity crowd here in San Diego. They've been roaring all night in support of their team. The Chargers came into the game with a record of 10 and 5. And so it looks like 11 was the magic number this year to win the division in the National Football League. A lot of people thought, Hank, because of the balance prevailing, that nine wins would get a lot of teams in the playoffs. That turned out not to be true. Well, you know, the, some of the surprising teams, the Oakland Raiders, for example, what a fantastic year they've had. Tom Flores has done a super job for that football team. And, of course, Al Davis and uh, Cleveland came out of the wilderness, so to speak, and won their division. So it's a lot of unusual things happen. Minnesota winning theirs, and everybody thought they'd be last. First and goal from the three. Here's Bradshaw rolling left, looking to throw his chase. He throws into the end zone. And That's it there. is caught for it. It's out of bounds. Incomplete caught by Blyer. Out of bounds. Yeah, ricochet. <laughs> yeah, ricocheted. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. Covered by Glenn Edwards. Blyer caught it, but he was out of bounds. That would have been a nice way for him to end his pro career, wouldn't it, Hank? Yeah, it really would have. 17 seconds remaining. Now they roll it a sack. Gene Tunney, or Jim Tunney, the referee, had ruled it a sack back at the 16. Now they're running the clock with 10 seconds left, 9. And it's goal to go. Here Bradshaw throwing incomplete, stopping the clock with 5 seconds left. So he was sacked. That action in the end zone was superfluous. Five seconds left. Listen to this shot. Fourth down. Goal to go. Back at the 16 for Pittsburgh. By the way, the rushing title to Earl Campbell with 1,934 yards. And the great Walter Payton won it again in the NFC. John Smith of New England had the most points in the league amongst the kickers. Fourth down, Pittsburgh. The King is dead. Long live the King. The pass into the end zone is caught for a touchdown. Caught for a touchdown, and time has expired. They will kick the extra point. Cunningham caught it. 16-yard pass to Cunningham. Brad shot of Cunningham. He laid it right in there, didn't he? No more time. They will have an opportunity to kick the extra point. That makes it 26 to 16. The game is over. Unless we have a penalty on the extra point here. Cole Quint will hold and Matt Barr will kick. Trying to bring about the final score of 27-17. The kick is up and good. Final score, 27-17. San Diego wins the AFC West. Much jubilation here in the California city. The end of the game between the Steelers and the Chargers. The final score. San Diego, 26. Pittsburgh, 17. The fans here give a royal salute to the San Diego Chargers. They won their 11th game of the year here tonight. They won the Western Division of the AFC. They are in the playoffs. They'll get
get next week off and be in action either on the third or the fourth. Hank, we saw it yesterday with the game that Cincinnati played against Cleveland. We saw it here tonight. Pittsburgh gave it everything they had against San Diego. New England's out of it, but they couldn't have asked for more from the Steelers. No, they really couldn't have. And the only questionable thing is we talk about it, and, and uh, Chuck Noll was such a quality guy and a great coach that he had his reason for doing what he did. Surprising that he didn't go for the three points when he had a chance on fourth and four. Uh, when they were down by nine points, but he didn't, and he had a good reason, I'm sure, and that could have made a difference in the game. You sort of jumped on the San Diego bandwagon tonight uh, based on what you saw, didn't you? Yes, I was, uh, all year long, was concerned about the fact they've never run the ball very well. They run from passing formations, but I think they're kind of coming on strong with the fact that Chuck Muncy is doing a super job. So is Thomas, the other running back, and they're throwing the ball with great skill and ability, and I think they've got a great, great chance to go all the way now that they have better balance if they continue to express that kind of balance in the future. Bernerska kicked four field goals here tonight to tie a San Diego record, and wasn't that Kellen Winslow something? He's always something. He, he has a special dimension. If you're going to win big in the National Football League in today's style of play, you must, you must, and I underline that by saying you must have a great tight end. They have him in Winslow, and they use him to great advantage. The crowd is booing here. A spectator ran out in the field, and uh, the police are really giving him the business as they take him off the field. San Diego won it 26 to 17 over the Steelers, and we'll return in just a moment. To either team, belong to either team at halftime with San Diego precariously ahead 9 to 3. But then they came out at the start of the second half, and on the very first play from scrimmage, Threw for a long pass play to Kellen Winslow to the Pittsburgh 23-yard line, a gain of 54 yards. A pass to Jefferson made it first and goal from the five. San Diego overcame a holding penalty, and then on fourth and one, they passed up the field goal, the Chargers did. Fouch sneaked it over to make the score 16-3, to and from that point on, the Chargers were rather comfortable. It turned out that Thornton of Pittsburgh was to get the next touchdown, making it 16 to 10 with 814 remaining in the game. Then Bernerska kicked his fourth field goal of the night, tying the San Diego record. That made it 19 to 10. And that's when the play came about that was most puzzling. Fourth and four Pittsburgh at the San Diego 20, trailing by nine. They passed up the field goal try, and the pass was incomplete to, uh, to Thornton as it was broken up, and the score ended 19-10 at the end of the third quarter, and San Diego took over. They went down to make it 26-10, a pass to Winslow. Well, uh, they had to punt to Pittsburgh, then got the ball back at their own 35. A pass to Muncie to the 48, a pass to Winslow to the 16. They moved on in, and Muncie took it over for the score, 26-10, and then with time elapsed, a 10-yard touchdown pass from Bradshaw to Cunningham brought about the final score of 26-17 San Diego. We'll talk about the playoff picture when we come back. Let's pause for this work. The playoff picture is not very complicated now. We'll talk about it. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the CBS radio network. This is WNAX, Yankton, South Dakota, your big friend for sports in the Midwest. 21 degrees at our studios at 11 o'clock. San Diego won here tonight, 26 to 17 over the Steelers. The Steelers were already out of the playoffs. San Diego wins the AFC West. Oakland becomes a wild card team, and New England is eliminated from postseason play. Houston will play at Oakland next Sunday, the 28th. Now, if Oakland wins, Oakland will play at Cleveland on either the 3rd or 4th of January, and Buffalo will play at San Diego on the 3rd or the 4th. If Houston wins next Sunday in their game at Oakland, Houston will play at San Diego on either the 3rd or the 4th, and Buffalo will play at Cleveland. And in the NFC, Los Angeles will play at Dallas this Sunday. Both of these games... Houston at Oakland and Los Angeles at Dallas will be covered here on CBS Radio next Sunday, the 28th. If Los Angeles wins at Dallas, Los Angeles then will play at Philadelphia on the 3rd or the 4th, and Minnesota will play at Atlanta on the 3rd or the 4th. If Dallas wins, Dallas will play at Atlanta on the 3rd or the 4th, and Minnesota will play at Philadelphia. Then we'll go on from there and cover the championship games on the 11th, the Super Bowl game on the 25th, the Pro Bowl on February 1st, and numerous Pro Bowl players were 
present here tonight. So there you have it. Tonight's game between Pittsburgh and San Diego is in with the final score. The Chargers 26 and the Steelers 17. Our spotter was Dan Sexton, our statistician Bob Sexton, and our engineer Mike Smith, our producer Patrick McGurk. Tonight's game was sponsored by Levi's for Men, by True Value Hardware Stores, by General Motors Acceptance Corporation, the car financing people, by Racket Club, Cologne and Aftershave, by Whirlpool Heating and Cooling Products, by Rise Baby Face Shave Cream, by Avis Renter Car, and by Stuart Warner. Frank Miller is the executive producer for CBS Radio Sports. Happy holidays, everyone. This is Jack Buck for Dick Stockton, Brent Musburger, and Hank Stram. The final score from San Diego was the Chargers 26, the Pittsburgh Steelers 17. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>